more than 160,000 riders from around the globe started the Zwift Academy. A four-week cycling challenge on the virtual roads of Zwift. For most, it's a personal quest to build fitness or for fun, but for others, it's a competition with the ultimate prize. Having completed the Zwift Academy in their own homes, the very best have now been selected for the grand final and brought to Spain, where just 10 riders remain in the fight to become a professional cyclist. There's no opportunity quite like this. After five gruelling days of intense competition, we will know who will be joining two of the world's best cycling teams, Alpa Sinderkernig and Canyon SRAM. I think the rider needs to be good enough to compete at every race. This is the Zwift Academy Finals. It's going to be super challenging, best person will win. It's the Zwift Academy Finals 2022. I didn't really expect you to be invited back, Si, I'll be no, honest. No, neither did I, but I have promised to let Matthew van der Poel win at ping pong this time. Now, Zwift Academy Finals have moved from a Mallorcan villa to this top spec cycling specific training facility in southern Spain. And I've got to say, as a, a lean, mean cycling machine myself, I feel quite at home here, man. Well, if anywhere's going to help you not go so slow, it's definitely here. Training facilities do not get any better. No, and neither do the roads either. We have some of the greatest roads in Europe on our doorstep, so there is no finer place for our pro team judges to put our finalists through their paces over the next five days. But before we go any further, let's meet our finalists. My name is Elena Wu Yen. I am 26 years old and I'm from New York City. The moment that I found out um, I made it to Zwift Academy, I was actually kind of confused. Like, you've made the finals and I was like, whoa, like this is unreal. I'm Nela. I'm from Germany, Cologne. I'm Cooper Sayers from Adelaide, Australia. I'm Chiara. I'm 37 years old, coming from uh, Italy. I'm Luca Vergalito. I'm from Milan and I'm 25 years of age. The hotel is, is wonderful. I'm looking forward to ride my bike. I can't wait. My name is Jasper. I'm 27 years old and I live in Belgium. My name's Lucas Hoffman. I'm 25. I'm from Adelaide, South Australia. <laughs> My name's Will Loudon, I'm 19, and I'm from the fair county of Suffolk in the United Kingdom. I'm slightly nervous, I just want to enjoy it. I think it's going to be a really good experience and we'll just see how we can go. <laughs> I'm Alex Morris, I'm 22 and I'm from Guildford in England. I think this week is really special, there's no opportunity quite like this. Winning would be the absolute dream. <laughs> They're so nice. This is such an upgrade on my bike. Hey, hey guys! Look at that. Alex. Hi, hello. Hey, hey, how are you? Yeah. How are you guys? Look at. Hi, Kiara, and Nina. Are these the bikes? Yeah. yeah. Oh wow! Oh, they put my name on it. <laughs> I feel like this is ready. Okay, I'm ready. See you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, hi guys. Oh, hi. hi, I'm Will. Hello. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. Hello. Hi. Hi. Elena. Hello, everybody. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. hi. How are you all doing? <laughs> Great to have you. Congratulations on making the final. How's, how's the travel? That was yeah. good, yeah. Was really good. Good. yeah. And what does it feel to finally like all meet each other like face to face? Yeah, it's yeah, pretty it's cool. Great. Yeah. Your friends? Yeah. 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 <laughs> no enemies just yet. <laughs> So there we have it, our finalists, 10 of the most gifted amateur cyclists out there. But we have had some sad news already, haven't we, Si? Yeah, we have. So Liz Van Howling of the USA will not be able to start the competition through illness. So she's flown all the way out to Spain only to be struck down by COVID-19. So our hearts go out to her, quite frankly. And it means that there are nine finalists remaining. And standing between them and their dreams, they have each other. They have some of the toughest tests that we could concoct, both indoors and out. But most importantly, they've got the decision makers, the pro team judges. My name is Christoph Rothoff, Sportive Manager of Alpes in de Koning. I am Christoph de Kegel, Head of Performance of Alpes in de Koning. 
To be a pro rider for Alpes in the Koning, you have to be a strong rider physically, dedicated to achieve the win for the team. But also we are looking for the right mental skills, right social skills. We are, uh, as one team, always on the road together. I'm Beth Duray and I'm team co-owner of Canyon Sram Racing. I'm Magnus Baxter. I'm the head sport director for Canyon Shram Racing. This is my seventh Swift Academy road, so I have seen a lot of talented riders come through the program. It's my first year at Swift Academy and it's really turning in to be a super platform for lots of talented riders to turn professional. We're looking for riders that are driven and ambitious. They need to want to be the best pro rider that they can be. It's not just the team staff the riders need to impress, but also the top pros who they could ride alongside next season in some of the biggest races in the world. I'm Mathieu van der Poel and I'm riding for Alpes in the Koning team. You have to be a good rider, of course, but also um, the dedication to, to try and be the best version of yourself, I think. It takes a lot of perseverance, commitment, sacrifice and effort to become a professional rider on a team like Alpes in the Koenig. Uh, I'm Elise Schabe and I'm uh, riding for Canyon Strum Racing Team. So it's most important that uh, you're a good teammate and uh, that also you have the willing to, to do well and to give everything every time you go to a race. Like obviously they are really nervous because there's only one contract and they know, yeah, one of them is gonna win. <laughs> right then, we better go and tell them what's in store in the next five days. Let's do it. There's some nice canapes over there, man. Yeah, I'm quite hungry, actually. Welcome, finalists. Glad to see you all settling into the Zwift Academy Training Centre and getting to meet some of the Canyon Tram and Alpsin de Koenig team. Yeah, don't get too comfortable, though, because the competition starts tomorrow. And over the next five days, you will need to push yourselves to the absolute limit through a series of tests that will give you the opportunity to show that you've got what it takes to be a pro cyclist. Make each day count, because not all of you will be here on the final day of the competition. That's right. Now, the first test, will take place tomorrow in the Zwift Arena, deep in the heart of the complex here. You'll be tackling a gruelling fitness test performed on Zwift, and it's designed to give the coaches a forensic look at your physiologies. There will be nowhere to hide, so if I were you, I would carefully consider which canapes will give you the optimal fueling strategy for tomorrow, and also get some advice from some more experienced hands. Obviously, Sai is here to help with that, but I would ignore him if I was you. Instead, we've got the professional riders of Canyon Tram and Alpsin de Koenig. So riders that you're going to be training with and racing against this week, plus who two of you will be calling teammates next year. Should we have some canapes? It may all be friendly now, but tomorrow the competition starts and the riders are going to need to impress the judges quickly. And later this week, some riders will be eliminated without even completing the final challenges. Yeah, it's rough, but no one said this was going to be easy. And I suspect even now, Manon, beneath that friendly exterior, there's going to be some rivalries developing. Yeah. It's the morning of day one, and we've got a little surprise after breakfast for our finalists. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Nice. <laughs> Pretty surreal. Like, it's happening again. Hopefully this time it's too good. Have like a fashion show. <laughs> 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 I'm Neela Lying. 
I'm 23 years old and I'm from Cologne, Germany. I study sports science in Cologne at the Sports University. I started cycling about two and a half years ago. At that time I was running, got injured and decided I started riding my bike. Didn't have a bike computer so I was just riding wherever I wanted. Cycling for me was mostly about freedom. When I started Swifting, I focused more on numbers. Swift for me was an opportunity to really do what you're supposed to do, so really write your workouts properly. Uh, when I started racing this spring, I had my first race in Cologne. It actually went out really, really good because I took the first place. <laughs> From this week, I expect to really learn a lot about what I can do, what I'm capable of. Winning the pro contract would mean a lot to me because it would be the beginning of a whole new chapter in my life. That would mean that I really gave my 100% and I was the best version of myself I could, I could show. It's game time. This is the Zwift Arena where the contestants are going to be first doing battle. Now, their new bikes haven't been set up yet, but mine has. So if you're not familiar with how this all works, then let me talk you through the process. As you can see, the back wheel's been removed and the bike has been attached to this, which is an indoor trainer. This one is made by Tax. It's got two main functions. Firstly, it records how much power the rider is producing. And instead of that power then going into your back wheel and driving you forwards, instead the trainer translates it and gives it to Zwift, which is a virtual reality indoor cycling and training platform. And then your avatar will move accordingly depending on how much power you're producing. Now that's but the really cool bit is that Zwift will then tell the indoor trainer how much resistance to apply depending on what's going on in the game. So for example, if you're riding uphill, it will feel like you're riding uphill and correspondingly, when you're riding downhill, it will feel like you're riding downhill. So over the course of the week, the riders will be doing several rides on Zwift and also a race as well. But today, it's all about their physiological data. So the coaches are looking to get insight as to not just how big the riders' engines are, but also what type of engine they've got. So are they a big aerobic athlete or do they rely more on their anaerobic system for top performance? So perhaps smaller engine, bigger turbo. That kind of knowledge will be really useful today, but actually it will also help the coaches decipher the riders' performances as the week goes on. Good morning, finalists. As we did last year, we're starting the finals week with the inside test on Zwift. Yeah, so this is going to give the coaches an accurate indication of your raw cycling ability. Now, the good news is that for most of this test, you're just going to be gently spinning your legs. The bad news is that, that gentle spinning is going to be punctuated by four intervals, okay? They're going to start short and vicious, and they're going to finish long and, frankly, vicious. Give it everything you've got. You can't afford to leave anything in the tank. Good luck. The test comprises of four maximal efforts. First up, it's a 20-second sprint from a dead stop. Now, to get the data the judges need, the riders aren't allowed to either get out of the saddle or change gear. Right then, the first 20-second test is out of the way. You can see the riders are still recovering from that. Even though it's just 20 seconds long, it's enough that they're going to be generating quite a lot of lactate in the legs. So they're going to be pretty sore and breathing pretty hard from it. Next, it's a three-minute effort. So Magnus, what are you expecting to see from this test? 
Uh, just give us a 360 degree view of, of the rider's sort of power profiles, really. Yeah, and we've had a three minute one. Yeah. That's, that can be a really hard effort to kind of pace. It is, and we saw some of the riders pacing that slightly differently to the others. Some longer efforts to come now, but yeah. it is pretty hot in here, yes. isn't it? <laughs> How is that going to affect them? Um, I think it will affect them to a certain extent, but so far they're dealing really well with the, um, with the heat management, so um, body temperature seems to be staying where it should be. Next, it's six minutes. Come on, guys, come on, hang it. Come on. Okay, so we're into our last effort of the test now, the longest one, 10 minutes long. This is the one that will show their aerobic capacity. Come on. Well done. You absolutely smashed that. How was it for you? Uh, the feeling was good and the exercise was quite hard, but I was feeling well, so I'm happy with that. It was brutal. Yeah. <laughs> Are you happy with, happy with how it went? Uh, I'm, I was hoping for better numbers, honestly. I think I was just like hotter than expected. Someone's got to do it, right? How you feeling, Coop? Pretty nervous. Yeah. But, uh, a bit more pressure than last year. But, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I'm back. Hi, I'm Coop Sayers. I'm 23 from Adelaide, Australia. The whole experience of the Zwift Academy was a high for me last year, like the opportunity to be in front of one of the world's greatest teams and um, the staff and all that was incredible. Definitely, yeah, you know, riders of the day twice. They've actually gone for Cooper again. Congratulations. Winning some challenges was amazing and then, you know, you have the, the low of getting close and, yeah, not, not winning. I took on board all the feedback that all the coaches gave me and all the staff and yeah, I just really turned it into motivation and still have the dream of going pro. So come back and ready to give it my best shot. As an athlete, you always have setbacks um, and you know, it's just another fork in the road. So every setback you have or anything that stops you, it always makes you a better person. A lot of feedback that I got from last year was obviously based around experience and racing exposure. I got a great opportunity this year to come overseas and have been racing overseas for the majority of the year. It's shown me a lot of myself, being able to like move and adapt to a new lifestyle and new racing. It just helped me improve all around as a rider and see that I do have the capabilities to go pro. Obviously, Alp Center looking not just for a Zwifter, but also someone that can fit into their team. And I'm hoping that with all the experience that I've gained from, the, from this year, that, yeah, that'll help give me the edge. I think that it's going to be super challenging. Different riders have different strengths and, yeah, best person will win. Right, guys, you're up next. Dig deep and give it your all. Good luck. As with the female contestants, first up for the guys is the sprint. Christoph, it begins. Have you got an idea already of the type of rider that you're looking for? Of the type of rider, not really. Um, I think we first need to see and, and always start from the numbers. I'm particularly looking forward to the to the three minute effort. Okay. That tells a lot uh, for most of the riders. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward. Next, the three minute test and all eyes are on Cooper. This is his biggest strength. Okay, guys, you've just watched the finalists do their three-minute test. Do you do this test on a regular basis? On training camp, we always do it, and uh, it's it's really a hard uh, a hard test. But uh, yeah, especially here for the guys on the rollers, it must be even harder. <laughs> if you overpace and then you look up and it's still two minutes to go, then it's a really long 
a long way to go. Um, also mentally, it's pretty hard. But yeah, it gives you a good insight on how you can uh, manage the trainings. It's the six minutes next. The temperature is really starting to bite, particularly for Jesper, it would seem. Okay, then three intervals down now, just one left, and it's the 10 minuter. Can they keep their cool in this searing heat? Were you happy with how it all went? Yeah, I think uh, I did probably similar better numbers than last year, uh, especially in the 20 second sprint, so, and the 10 minutes, so yeah, I'm, yeah, it's happy a good with start. How you, how you paced it as well? Yeah. You look like you enjoyed that effort quite a lot. You were kind of smiling halfway through. Oh, sometimes <laughs> smiling is the best way to get through it. Okay, so it's the first of the coaches deliberations of the week. We're gonna do it all together. I'm gonna to start with you, Beth. Any standout performances from the female finalists for you today? So I probably was hoping that someone would really stand out compared to another, but across the board, they were quite even. And Magnus, I mean, I guess you'd agree with that. In terms of, you know, we saw perhaps Alex had the highest absolute powers, but then when it comes out on the road, is that necessarily going to translate to the best cyclist? No, I mean, we've got to take everything into account, how they handle, you know, their bikes, um, sprints, downhills, um, you know, anything that comes, you know, gets thrown into uh, the path of a rider. So the test is good to see that they, they're all, co they've come here and they're ready. Um, and like Beth said, I think they were performing pretty decent. Okay, so good level then. What about you, Christoph? on the men's side of things? Anyone stood out for you? In general, we saw a good overall performance of all the, the five contenders. Uh, for me personally, after today, um, Luca uh, outperformed it a bit. Yeah, the differences are still very, very small. But on the complete exercise from the, the 20 second sprints until the 10 minute effort, Okay, and what about Cooper? Because we've seen him in this situation before. Were you looking at him and thinking that he's made a step forward this year? Well, that's what we hope. That's the reason why he is back, uh, back here and uh, back in the game selected. He looked confident coming in today, having done it before. I, I wonder whether that was a bit of an advantage, perhaps. Yeah, nice to see maybe um, just being already one time through this complete experience, uh, the, the stress, how you handle the days, uh, how you take care of the recovery, the fatigue, uh, the nutrition, because maybe yeah, last year, day four, day five, it went a bit wrong. Maybe that was a nutrition problem. I wonder whether he's going to be telling the fellow contestants, giving them advice. If it was me, I wouldn't. I'd have kept it completely <laughs> to myself. Not. But, uh, <laughs> what about um, weaker riders, Beth? I mean, you said everyone was sort of like, equal on the female side of things but in terms of other things that you can pick out perhaps like their pacing strategies or the way they you know sit on the bike did anything stand out to you as perhaps being a bit of a warning sign i wouldn't say necessarily warning sign i think eleanor in the um, six minutes test she probably didn't pace herself that well and she really went out hard and then you could sort of see she dropped but at the same time, she came back up again at the end. But apart from that, yeah, there was difficult to find like a real standout weak link. Yeah, I have to agree with Beth on that. Um, there's a couple of things that I'm looking at as well is that, you know, the upper body strength, the core stability of the rider when they're doing the more violent sort of shorter efforts, how do they, you know, transmit the power onto the bike that we'll, we'll see later on in the week as well as the fatigue starts settling, settling in. Yeah, and what about you, Chris? Have any riders stood out perhaps as being a little bit weaker? Maybe Jasper was a little bit weaker uh, on the overall performance of today. But as I said, we have to mention a little bit. I was mostly concerned about uh, his cadence, how he, uh, how he handled the efforts. Um, he started really well in each type of effort, but the second half of each effort he dropped a bit to a cadence that was yeah, around 80 average, which is 
yeah, really low. It puts a lot of pressure on his legs, doesn't it? So if you abuse the, the, the fast twitch muscle power a bit, then it's hard to, to just get through a complete uh, week of fatigue like this. And that's what pro cycling is all uh, also mostly about. Eh? Okay, one other thing with Jasper is he looked like he was incredibly hot. Now, it was baking in that room, wasn't it? Yeah. Magnus, we spoke and you were saying it's, it's the same for everyone, but is it really? You know, you were a man for the Spring Classics, you won Parry Bay, also as a bigger rider, typically that would suggest that you wouldn't deal with heat quite so well. Yeah, I, th I think it is ultimately. Um, you know, for me as a rider, it was always the first day in the heat, I struggled, second day I adapted to it. It's actually interesting to see how they cope with the, the, the conditions that we had in that room today. They were too hot, but you know, can you deal with that situation? Can you adapt to it and perform under under the stress that uh, other you might not otherwise have? Okay, so no sympathy. No, no none whatsoever. No sympathy. <laughs> um, and Beth, I think you mentioned that there was something um, that you'd noticed in Kiara as well when she was riding. Yes, uh, both Maggie and I noticed that Kiara, like her power file, like a power graph at the bottom of the screen was so rock solid like there was no spikes at all and it was really it was actually outstanding that she obviously knew what power she could do and was able to deliver it that like the numbers were good also but it was just that she was just a constant flat line now that's really interesting isn't it would you rather have a rider that came to the Zwift Academy as the complete package that could already do impressive tests and pedal efficiently or would you rather have a rough diamond perhaps so someone that came into this test made a complete hash of it got their pacing wrong but still just about got the numbers out i think that depends on the what we see in the challenges coming up okay finalists congratulations all of you okay you have made it through day one and it was a particularly gruelling fitness test, made even harder by the heat. But you did it, and I've got to say, I didn't realise quite how much of a sadist I was, but it was a pleasure to watch you. It really was, and the judges have been watching you closely, and they have all that important data. That's right, they've been picking through it, and have carefully selected their rider of the day. So who has shone the brightest on day one? The riders of the day are... Kiara and Luca. Congratulations both of you, well done. Congratulations. Kiara, they said that you paced your effort to perfection and you executed all the efforts really well. And Luca, they said that you basically smashed every single effort and you really shone bright, so congratulations. Thank you. Now, unfortunately, that does mean that I've got the difficult task tonight. So the riders that will be leaving the competition. No, I'm only kidding. You're all staying. Don't you worry about it. Go and get some food. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Well right, guys. It was quite unexpected and uh, I'm really happy. I hope to do the best that I can and to, to be happy every day. It's nice. To be the first rider of the day, of the week, it's good to start well, but hopefully it will continue like this and hopefully the best is yet to come. Well, that brings us to the end of day one of Zwift Academy 2022. Four more days to go and we will know who our two new professional cyclists are going to be. What do you think to my little joke at the end there, Manon? They all probably hate you after that. I know I would anyway. Yeah. That was savage. It was, yeah, but a bit much, maybe. Anyway, what did you make of today? That was a really brutal start to the day. I don't think you can do anything harder on an indoor trainer than, than physical tests. But I'm really excited for tomorrow, out on the roads with a pro and a cheeky time trial in there too, which is going to be super exciting. That's right. And it's going to be fascinating to see how this pans out as well. I think in the women's competition, it's a really even field. So will we see someone emerge tomorrow as the dominant rider. And then in the men's field, we've got our early leader, Luca, put in an incredible performance today, but he is now the rider to beat and they're all gonna be after him. So actually, he might be feeling a little bit nervous in some respects as well. Anyway, you can find out in episode two of Zwift Academy 2022. We will see you there.
next time on Zwift Academy Finals. The finalists hit the Spanish roads with the pros. <laughs> the riders give it their all on a hill climb time trial and the judges have a tough decision to make. She was straight in like she'd been doing it for 10 years. The riders of the day are... More than 160,000 riders from around the globe started the Zwift Academy. A four-week cycling challenge on the virtual roads of Zwift. For most, it's a personal quest to build fitness or for fun. But for others, it's a competition with the ultimate prize. Having completed the Zwift Academy in their own homes, the very best have now been selected for the grand final and brought to Spain where just 10 riders remain in the fight to become a professional cyclist. There's no opportunity quite like this. After five gruelling days of intense competition, we will know who will be joining two of the world's best cycling teams, Alpa Sinderkernig and Canyon Sram. I think the rider needs to be good enough to compete at every race. This is the Zwift Academy Finals. It's going to be super challenging, best possible win. Coming up, the finalists hit the Spanish roads are put through their paces by the pro riders <laughs> before giving it their all on a hill climb time trial. Can they impress the judges? She was straight in like she'd been doing it for 10 years. The riders of the day are... This is the Zwift Academy Finals Day 2. Good morning finalists. How are the legs feeling after yesterday? Feeling ace, I think, but uh, I guess we're going to find out. Good man, confidence, I like it. So today you're going to be heading out on the roads around Denia with the pro teams of Canyon Tram and Alpsin to Koenig to see how you cope on a fast training ride. That's right. Remember, being a pro cyclist is more than just legs and lungs, okay? So the judges are going to be looking to see your razor sharp bike handling skills and your confidence riding shoulder to shoulder at speed with some of the best riders on the planet. Then after a few hours, we'll meet you somewhere out there where the second part of the challenge will be revealed. Oh yes. Good luck, go get ready. We'll see you at the team cast. Hi. Yesterday we had the uh, indoor session, so I'm really looking forward to, uh, to, to ride in this beautiful place. So they told us a little bit about the first half of the ride. There's going to be three by ten minutes of skills, so some pace lining, a uh, ten minute individual TT. My name is Elena Wu Yen. I am 26 years old and I'm from New York City. Um, growing up, I never identified as an athlete. In fact, I would say I was probably one of the nerdiest kids at school. Just super focused on academics, music, did some ballet. After graduation, um, I moved to the Bay Area, um, and everyone there loves to bike. Um, I had never ridden a road bike before, had grown up, you know, just casually riding bikes. So this was in late 2019, kind of thought about getting a road bike and saw a used road bike, and I was like, whoa, like, this is cool. It was perfect timing, because then the pandemic hit, Bike sales went through the roof. If I had not bought that bike, I probably wouldn't even be here today. Probably pretty quickly fell in love with biking. Um, loved the feeling of, you know, pushing myself on a climb, getting to the top, being rewarded with great views. In 2022, that's when I got a lot more serious. Um, started racing both outside and also indoors on Zwift. Um, so yeah, it's been an awesome first season and it's really cool to now be here at the finals. So I live in a typical New York-sized apartment, which is very, very small. My entire Zwift setup is probably like a foot away from my table slash desk and bed. The moment that I found out um, I made it to Zwift Academy, I was actually kind of confused because um, I think it was sort of set up as like a, an interview, like you've made the finals, and I was like, whoa, like this is unreal. Um, in terms of my strengths, I'm definitely a pure climber type. Um, I think 
just because I'm on the smaller side. Winning this would be an absolute dream come true. I think first I would just be in shock, like am I actually dreaming or is this real life? Being able to race with the World Tour Pro um, level next year would be amazing. I think it's just, yeah, wouldn't be able to even describe it in words. Is it kind of the same? Most of them done pace line work before. Were they all quite confident? They, when you told them what they were doing, or were they? Yeah, no one seemed to have any kind of like big, you know, questions. How do you be, how do we do it? Everyone has sort of seemed like yeah, we, we're in control of what we know what we're yeah. about to do. So what have you got in store for them? First of all. They start the first effort. We will try to do about three efforts today. Three, yeah. three times, uh, let's say, 10 minutes. Uh, have you briefed your riders to give them a bit of a hard time, or are you just letting them <laughs> ride? We never need to brief uh, our guys to give them a hard time. <laughs> uh. <laughs> One of the most exhilarating things you can do as a road cyclist is to ride in a pace line. It's a technique that allows a group of cyclists to go much faster than one rider on their own, and for less effort by working together. Why? Because wind resistance is the biggest force slowing the rider down. If you shelter behind another rider, you save energy. The idea of the pace line then is to change the rider on the front frequently, meaning that they can ride at high speeds for a short time and then recover whilst they shelter behind the other riders. It's an easy skill to master, but the faster you go, the harder it gets. And if it goes wrong, there's a high price to pay. I wouldn't want to be the rider bringing down the Canyon Tram or Alpes into Koenig Pros. Let's put it that way. Yes, go, go. We're about 200 meters off the back of you. We can see you. So go, go, go. What are you hoping to see from the riders today? Just good technical skills in, in the line. Obviously, how close they're happy to sit to the wheel in front of them, um, coming around the last wheel, how they get back into that base line. And from the car, are you looking at, you know, how they're riding on the bike, if they, you know, look steady, if they got good position? Pedal stroke. Um, core stability, upper body control, um, you name it, yeah. just about everything mm -hmm. that makes a bike rider a good bike rider. Cooper's looking comfortable, isn't he, I think, again? Yep. That was my first impression, too. Like we saw also last year, the cadence of those guys is also always lower. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, we discussed yesterday that was one of the weakest points of yeah. uh, Jasper. Yeah, yeah so well, I saw immediately yeah, now, uh, immediately. Yeah. <laughs> but we have to say, on the when he did the high power output efforts yesterday, Luca, then his cadence was... Uh, but now it's, good and it's, it's rather low, same yeah. to the speed and, and the others. So is there anybody that's standing out to be good or bad at this so far? Neela seems to be the most, the smoothest person and the most confident just switching across into the wheels. Alex seems to be a bit overgeared, but otherwise okay. Um, and I think, yeah, probably Chiara and Elena seem a little bit more hesitant and a little bit more, a bit rigid. The rotations, if yeah. you see it now, if you see how close they are uh, together, you see they are communicating a bit. It looks uh, quite okay. Now it's like Matthew doesn't want to stop. The pace line session finishes with a sprint for the town side, and Matthew van der Poel exerts his authority. His job is safe for another year at least. Luca, meanwhile, may not necessarily impress the judges with his chase, but he earns a fist bump from van der Poel himself.
that descent was mad. I was uh, <laughs> ripping it down there. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not used to like that kind of speed coming from Suffolk, like we do, of anything like that. I don't know what went on behind, but I think something happened. I'm not really sure I didn't see it, but we looked behind and it was just like a couple of bikes on the road. Yeah, so we're just pushing it a little bit on the descent. Um, just came a little bit too hot into the corner and everyone sort of slowed down. And then I sort of didn't have enough time and I sort of braked quite hard and I just sort of um, clipped the wheel and went over the handlebars, so yeah. My name's Lucas Hoffman, I'm 25. I'm from Adelaide, South Australia. My coach Dan from Nero Coaching, he's involved with Cooper Sayers and Jay Vine. He said it would be a great idea to do Zwift Academy for 2022. Australians, they don't seem to get as many opportunities. Um, the fact of it's physically isolated from the rest of the world. Um, the eyes aren't, aren't always on us. Zwift Academy is a perfect opportunity for that because you can pretty much do it from the comfort of your, your own home. But I started on the track with my, my brother, who's now Commonwealth Games champion and world champion in the team sprint. I'm probably, I would say, I'm more of a sprinter, but I'm quite good at the shorter climbs, you know, four to five minutes. I'm an apprentice electrician. I'm in my fourth year now. This came up, so that's been put on hold for the next few months. So for me, it would be quite a, a different lifestyle change from working as an electrician to being a professional rider. It'll be quite different. It'll take some adjusting. I first got my trainer four years ago when I was living in Wyala. Um, so I started Zwifting there. I find it's just best for me when I'm working. It's just easy. I come home, have a shower, have something to eat, and then just jump on the trainer. So to impress the judges, I think I'm going to have to pull out something pretty special. Um, I think a lot of us guys are pretty equal. We're all quite strong. I'm at sort of the crossroads of my career where I've sort of started to train a lot more. It's just a fantastic time to put the most into this and um, hopefully get a contract out of it. I want to give them my best shot. I don't want to go home having not given it my all. Okay, guys, we've got you around a cortados because we're going to keep it brief, okay? So the judges have been scrutinising your every move out there, but now you're going to be on your own, okay? In a race of truth. So you've got a time trial to come. It's not just going to be about raw power. The judges are also going to be looking for pacing, position, technique, okay? So that's, that's what's going to impress them as well, all right? Better give it everything you've got and uh, see, off the, see off the coffees. We'll get going, all right? Yeah. Okay, great stuff. This is no ordinary time trial, and it's not a regular hill climb. Starting out with gentle slopes, the road kicks up and turns into a much steeper challenge, so pacing is going to be very important to take the win. The riders go off in number order, so Jesper is first. Three, two, one, go! This isn't necessarily a course that will suit him, so he'll need to pace it perfectly to get everything out of himself over the 5.1 kilometers and impress the two Christophs. Next up, Lucas. One, go. With a two minute gap between riders and a twisting turning course, it's unlikely he'll see Jesper ahead. So for this race of truth, it's all going to be in the mind and the legs. What are your predictions for the climb? Who do you think is going to be fastest up? It would be logic to expect Luca to be the fastest. Uh, on the other hand, I'm really looking forward what Will will do with his 55 kilos. One, go! Go for it, mate! Go, go, go. With the first two riders on course, Will is next. And this might just be his perfect challenge. At the next Matthew van der Poel. I wouldn't dare to say that, no. <laughs> My name's Will Loudon, I'm 19, and I'm from the fair county of Suffolk in the United Kingdom. So I really started cycling a very long time ago, really, when I was nine or 10 years old. And I had this like really small V-brake mountain bike, and that's kind of what really got me into it. And then I got my first like mini road bike and just sort of rode from there. 
My specialty in riding would definitely be time trialling. And naturally, as a smaller rider, I'm lighter. So combining both time trialling and hill climbing has kind of found a little niche for me, really, as a hill climb time trialist, I guess you could say. I do also ride for my local club. That's probably like one of the biggest skill upgrades for me, was riding in groups. So I started Zwifting when I got my first smart turbo trainer, really. So having like interaction and just being able to ride with a, a, a changing world on any like interactive platform is just so much better than a, a static turbo. Outside of cycling, I have been studying medicine, but I've kind of decided to take a little break from that and pursue some other interests. In some ways, a lack of life experience was sort of not gonna be so good to me becoming the best doctor I could be. I'd definitely like to do my best this week. Um, I think it's a good opportunity to just showcase what you can do. Three, two, one, go! Go! Back on the mountain, Cooper sets off. And last but not least, Luca. Go. All the male riders are out on course, and ex-choir boy medical student Will is eating away at his two rivals up the road, Jesper and Lucas. Jesper gives it his all, crossing the line in 10.44. Jesper, how was that? Looks like you left everything on the road. Maybe almost everything, yeah. Followed by Lucas at 11.16. Will crosses the line to take the lead, and with Cooper unable to quite match him. That only leaves Luca in with a chance of the win. So with a time of 10 minutes, Luca has put over 30 seconds into Will on a comparatively short course and taken victory. I mean, you look quite fresh after that. Yeah, totally fresh. Yeah? Yes. Quite good? Yeah, I'm tired, but <laughs> it's okay. It's now the women's turn to lay it down against the clock. Three, two, one. Go for it! Go, 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 go. Elena is away first. She loves climbing, but this may not be steep enough for her. One, go! Alex is next. And then yesterday's rider of the day, One, Kiara, who go, showed go. that 37 certainly isn't too old to be competing at the highest level. I'm Chiara. I'm 37 years old, and I'm coming from uh, Italy. I started cycling uh, more or less uh, six years ago. I was a runner before, then I had some injuries and uh, I decided to buy a bike. It was a love at first sight with the bike. I ride every day, I cannot um, have a day without it. I know that uh, AJ is uh, less relevant for women in cycling. Uh, you know, Annemiek van Vleuten, she is, uh, I guess, 41, and she won everything this year. I am for sure a climber. Uh, I love uh, medium-long uh, climbs. Every time I go out in the week, uh, I'm, I am always looking for climbs. I started uh, racing on Zwift uh, in 2021 in Team Castelli. After one, two, three races, I started enjoying a lot and winning some, uh, some races, and I was happy of that. Sometimes I don't, I don't uh, believe in myself. I always feel not enough uh, compared to, to other uh, girls. And when I understood that I was able to compete at high levels, I was very, very happy and very proud of myself. Every race uh, is... Um, is a kind of um, a personal challenge. Winning this competition, uh, uh, it's for sure a dream coming true. In life, you don't have to stop dreaming and you don't have to stop moving. 
and changing. Uh, every, every chance is a great opportunity to learn uh, something new. So I don't want to stop. Three, two... Last off the line is Neela, who this course might suit if she can get her pacing right. With all four riders now out on course, they've each moved from the flatter first half of the race to the steeper second half, and gaps are starting to emerge. Tactics and pacing strategy, as well as power, will be the magic combination. But who will find the right balance to win? What are your expectations for this hill climb? I'm just looking to see a good, solid performance. I think they've all got different abilities on different types of climbs. This one is more of a power climb than you know, a, a really steep one. <laughs> Elena crosses the line in 13.37, but Alex, who started two minutes behind, crosses the line only one minute later. With a time of 11.47, Chiara has put nearly 30 seconds into her nearest rival, Neela, who finishes with 12 minutes 50. But today it was about more than just this result. So it will be interesting to hear what the judges have to say. How was it? Yeah. Yeah, hard, but I'm happy with my pacing. Yeah. How was it for you? Painful. But fun. I just know that the other girls are really, they, they're really good. Are you happy, happy with how you did on the whole today? Yeah, I think. Okay, there's a lot to debrief today, isn't there, I think, folks? Firstly, I've got some results. Now, we'll start with the women's show first. Kiara took the win. She was 30 seconds ahead of Neela. Then it was Alex, about another 30 seconds back. And then it was Elena bringing up the rear in fourth place. Now, Beth, I know you said Kiara was going to win. <laughs> well why why had you picked her? Lucky guess, lucky punch. No, I, I chose uh, Kiara because I think probably because of the performance she did on challenge one in the inside test. She was really able to pace it and expected on that sort of climb that she sh would be able to do that same again. So she proved that she could. And then guys, the winner was Luca, who had a, a, another big margin of victory. So 36 seconds up on Will. And then it was really closely packed, wasn't it? So you had Will and then you had Cooper, which seems like a good ride from him. And then you had Jesper just behind. And then Lucas sporting his new road rash was down in fifth place, but still a solid ride at, um, I think he only lost about a minute and 16. So was there anything in those results that surprised you? No, not really. Um, it was good to see that Lucas in the end after his crash was uh, rather well performing, but in the end uh, we expected Luca to be the winner. Then, then the other three, they were quite uh, short together. So Well, uh, good to see that he can deliver, like Chiara, on actually out on the road. And Magnus, what about for you, like particularly with the, the more technical elements, maybe at the start with the pace lines? Yeah, I, th I think actually for me, it's all about looking at the technical elements. We know that they're here already based on the performance that they can do, the power that they can produce. So I'm looking a lot at the how they are in the pace line, uh, the confidence that they, they ride with, um, that sort of 360 degree awareness that they have on, on the bike when they're, when they're in that group. You know, we've done a fair bit of climbing and descending today as well. and. You know, I'm, I'm watching closely all the time what they're doing there to uh, to make, I think, more of a decision for me based on that. OK, did you like what you see? So far, actually, really, really quite surprisingly good. Cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And what about you, Christoph? Was there anyone who perhaps looked weaker than any of the others? Uh, not in particular. They all confirmed that they are still uh, still quite close, not only on the pure physical performance of the day, but also on the on the bike handling. I think we were quite satisfied with uh, how they just uh, handled the bike uh, in the efforts which we did with the team. So, yeah. Very interesting. All right. And Beth Magnus, anything from you? I was probably more surprised by Nela today and, and her ability in, in the pace line. She, she really was the first either, you know, person that caught in that group that 
looked confident, like super confident. Whereas the other riders took a little bit more time before they kind of settled in and found the confidence amongst the pro riders and sort of, yeah, just relaxed in that group. Whereas she was straight in like she'd been doing it for 10 years. Uh, we had two guys, uh, Cooper and uh, Jasper, who did 20 to 50 watts more today on their, let's say, 10 minute uphill effort compared to the 10 minute effort yesterday. They managed pretty well in an uphill, uh, uphill effort today. But on the other hand, we have to say the uphill effort today was 4.7, 4.8 great percentage, which yeah. is quite rolling still. And guys, obviously we had, we had a crash that we didn't see. Is it, a, is it a bit of a black mark for poor old Lucas? Because we talked a lot previously about the importance of bike handling and he was in the middle of the bunch by the sound of things. Yes, but it can happen always to anybody. I don't think uh, it's a good moment already to, to give him a... <laughs> a black mark, okay. <laughs> well, that's, that's really good to see. Well, it sounds to me that things are still quite close in terms of riders of the day. So I won't ask you now, but if you continue having your discussions and then we'll catch up a little bit later and we can talk to the finalists and, uh, and deliver the verdicts for today. Sound like a plan? Yes. Sounds good. Okay, great stuff. Mm -hmm. Finalists, you have made it through day two of the Zwift Academy 2022. Most of you unscathed. Unfortunately, there are still bits of Lucas on a road up in the mountains, but I've got to say, we're all super impressed with how you picked yourself up and got straight back in there. So yeah, that was very cool. Definitely. Girls, you were able to descend with one of the world's best descenders, Elise Shabby. And guys, I know Matthew and the Alps Syndicate guys didn't go easy on you either. No, right. Should we have some results, first of all, for the time trial? Okay, we'll start with the men. In fifth place, we had Lucas. Fourth place, we had Jesper. Third, Cooper. And second, Will. So taking the win was Luca. So congratulations to you, Luca. And then in the women, Elena. In fourth, in third place, Alex. In second place, Nila. So Chiara, you take the win, which means we've got our Italians on the top spot, both of you, so congratulations. But who impressed the judges the most? The riders of the day are. Mila and Lucas. Congratulations both. Well done. Mila, they said that you performed really well on the bike in the skills. You're really comfortable and confident on the bike and again, performed really well in the hill climb. And Lucas, crashing can happen to anybody and it is part of bike riding. And they were really impressed with how you picked yourself up and carried on with the day. Yeah, okay, right then finalists. You're all gonna be through to tomorrow, of course. So go grab some dinner. Tomorrow is another big day, okay? So you're gonna have a ride in the hills in the morning and then another session later in the day as well. Get stuck in. It was a very demanding day. Uh, it was quite tough with the climb in the end, but I actually enjoyed it, so it feels really like a relief. The result today was a confident boost. I'm just happy to be here. I'm very proud, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad I, I pushed through the pain. Um, Getting right out of the day is pretty, pretty special. Um, yeah, overcoming a little bit of adversity. The TT was quite rough. I couldn't quite get into the aero position, so I felt like I lost a little bit of, of time there. And going over the bumps with the shoulder was quite painful. But yeah, I guess I got through it. So looking forward to another day. What a tough day that was, Si. A long bike ride, a whole lot of pressure, and a race at the end. Oh, I know. It does feel, doesn't it, like we've started to see a couple of favourites emerge with Luca and Chiara, but We've got to qualify that. We've only seen a fraction of what the finalists can offer. So we know for certain that tomorrow, on day three, they've all got to come out swinging, all guns blazing. So make sure you check back in for episode three of Zwift Academy 2022. Now I, Manon, I'm going to excuse myself. I've just seen the least shabby at the bar. I need to get some descending tips. You do, to be fair. I do, yeah. See you in a bit. Next time, 
on Zwift Academy Finals. It's the first double day for our finalists. Outdoors, then in. I think she's struggling with the control of the bike. They go head to head on the streets of Crit City. Buckle up, it's going to go right down to the line. And two of our wannabe pros will be going home early. The riders that will be leaving the competition are. More than 160,000 riders from around the globe started the Zwift Academy. A four-week cycling challenge on the virtual roads of Zwift. For most, it's a personal quest to build fitness or for fun. But for others, it's a competition with the ultimate prize. Having completed the Zwift Academy in their own homes, the very best have now been selected for the grand final and brought to Spain, where just 10 riders remain in the fight to become a professional cycler. There's no opportunity quite like this. After five gruelling days of intense competition, we will know who will be joining two of the world's best cycling teams, Alpa Cinder Koenig and Canyon Sram. I think the rider needs to be good enough to compete at every race. This is the Zwift Academy Finals. It's going to be super challenging, best person will win. It's the first double day for our finalists. Outdoors, then in. They go head to head on the streets of Crit City. Buckle up, it's going to go right down to the line. And two of our wannabe pros will be going home early. The riders that will be leaving the competition are. Yesterday's hill climb time trial went well for both Luca and Will. But sadly, this morning, Will delivered some bad news to the team. So, I uh, just found out this morning that I tested positive for COVID. Well, honestly, I don't really know what to say, other than this just, this absolutely sucks, and we're all gutted for you. We did, though, want to get you out here, just have a bit of a chat with, with the Christophs as well. Because it's so sad that for you that you have to go home. Our idea was to follow your bit more. Maybe when you're doing well, even invite you to some kind of training camp with our devil team. Uh, well, we'll just keep doing what you are doing. Uh, actually, it's a really brutal way of getting out of this competition this way. We were really looking forward to see your further evolution here uh, during this week. You are a bit the new kid on the block. You still need to discover cycling. Uh, I was really looking forward to, OK, how is Will going to handle the next days? We really want to follow up, follow you up, like Christoph said, and then uh, hopefully see you next year again. Yeah, well, to be honest, like, the last five days has been, like, genuinely the best of my life. You know, it, it's sad that I'm not going to be able to finish it. You know, although it's unsatisfactory not being able to I like finish the week and, and push through with the best of my ability. It just gives me extra motivation like in the future to reflect on, on what I've learned in, in the next year, like improve on them and maybe come back stronger. With Will leaving, we're now down to four riders for both men and women. Good morning, finalists. Hopefully you've recovered slightly from yesterday's gruelling day because there's another hard day on the cards today. That's right, not one, but two rides today. First up, a steady two-hour spin, but where the coaches are once again going to be scrutinising your skills, and this time focusing on some key technical elements that can often trip up even experienced pros in races, like putting on rain jackets, dropping back to the team car, grabbing water bottles and the like. Then later today, we're going to head down to the Zwift Arena, where it's going to be the first head-to-head -head race on Zwift. That's right. It'll be a battle for supremacy, but also potentially for survival, because two of you might be going home tonight. I mean, I haven't experienced, um, like, having to, to follow cars and races or get bottles, um, so it'll be new for me for sure, but I'm excited to just learn that. Um, I, I do know how to, like, put on my jacket and things like that. Yeah, we'll see how it is. Really looking forward to the, um, to the race in the evening. I think it suits me well. Uh, I will try to, to do the best I, I, I can and to win uh, also this challenge. I 
I'm Luca Vergalito, I'm from Milan and I'm 25 years of age. My nickname is Il Bandito and everybody is wondering why. My father used to call me Luquito Il Bandito. Four years ago, I took sort of famous KOM in Italy, uh, Laghi di Cancano, and I, from there I decided to switch my, my name from my real name to Il Bandito on Strava and then to all the social media. In the first period, everybody was wondering who is this guy, 50 years old man with the e-bike or something. So I started riding my bike when I was uh, probably around seven, eight years of age. My love for cycling came out uh, when I was uh, probably around 14. I did some racing, uh, even though I'm not uh, I'm no more racing competitive, I still uh, uh, train a lot. I started riding on Zwift in 2018, uh, but I was just doing some training when outside is, it was raining. I think my, my speciality is, uh, is medium to long climb. I think I'm good also from an endurance uh, point of view. I, I don't know if I have what it takes to, to get the pro contract, but I know that I will give my best and try to, to reach that goal. Riding your bike for living uh, I think it will be incredible. So I think that this is my chance to, to reach that dream. So the first ride of the day was 45 kilometers and 660 meters of climbing, riding with the pros. What's fascinating about this competition is that there's a whole new breed of cyclists emerging those who are Zwifters, and indoor cyclists first and foremost. I mean, Zwift is great for staying fit and motivated, especially when you're short on weather, short on time and short on roads. It's also risk-free and super accessible and a great way into the sport. The Zwift Academy then is the perfect opportunity for new physically gifted athletes, as it is for our finalists. But for the pro ranks, they need to be the complete package. Riding in the pro peloton takes a lot of skill and to be able to navigate your way around the peloton is super important. So today the riders are going to be learning some of those key skills like taking bottles from the car, riding behind the car, putting rain capes on and most importantly taking a musette. Let's see how they get on. Let's see if I can get this on. Oh, I haven't done this in a while. Oh, not too bad. Where are my snacks? Keeping the team leaders in best condition during a race often means a rider dropping back through the wheels to the car and collecting something for them. In this case, for the men, four bottles. First up, it's Cooper. He seems exceedingly comfortable. This, in fact, looks like a bit of a masterclass. This is good bottle handling. Last one. Papa. And he is efficient, back in. Hello. There we go, go on then, what are, you, what are we giving that? Nine? Yes. Yeah. Nine out of 10, yes. Yeah. Luca, you can bring them back to Christophe. So you are rid of it again. Do an exercise with a wild dog. Yeah. <laughs> Tour de France training. Next exercise is the dog in the peloton. <laughs> <laughs> that way. Thanks. Next, it's Lucas, and this is not going well. He is going far too slowly, which means that it will be really hard for him to get the water back to the group. You're gonna be dropped, eh? Yeah. 
That's your first. <laughs> what we said, four out of ten? Something like that, yes. Yeah. Huh? Yes, he's dropped. Christoph yeah. now needs to pace him back up with the draft from the car. Yeah, water bowl down. One isn't better than a man down. Yeah. <laughs> you can hand them over uh, to Christoph. Lucas, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we put it on your bill. <laughs> Maybe it's only three and a half now, instead of four out of ten. Yeah. With the men waiting for Lucas to bring them a drink, it's the women's turn to get their lunch from the side of the road. They have the added stress of doing this in close proximity to another rider. and keep it concise. I'm Alex Morris, I'm 22 and I'm from Guildford in England. I started riding growing up. I think cycling was definitely a family activity. I was in my second year of uni. I decided to try triathlon. I switched my preference from running to cycling and have never looked back. When I started racing on Zwift, it wasn't too long ago. It was a at the start of the year in 2021. I definitely enjoyed the intensity of the race and was really happy with how I did. It definitely gave me some confidence to race outside. I did my first national series race in Lancaster in July um, and was second on the podium, which I'm, <laughs> I can't, still can't quite believe. Yeah, I have an identical twin sister. Um, and yeah, we're best friends. <laughs> That's, no, don't say that. <laughs> I'd say I'm quite an all-rounder. I definitely enjoy a race where there's a lot of climbing involved, but at the same time, I do enjoy a lot of variety. I think this week is really special. There's no opportunity quite like this. Winning would be the absolute dream. This is like the perfect time for me to become a professional cyclist. I'm gonna put everything into it because I know how special the team is. I try to not worry and compare myself too much on the numbers and just hope that when the time matters, I can perform at my very best and just focus on my, on my own performance. With the skills test done, the judges will now have a better idea of how much work would be needed to get the finalists up to scratch for pro racing. But what about tactics? Well, that is for challenge number two. So, how does a Zwift race work then? Well, just like all the other Zwift rides this week, the riders are on indoor trainers, tax in this case, which will record the rider's power output, then transfer that into the virtual world where their avatar will move accordingly on Zwift. Now, just like the real world, your avatar is affected by gradient, but also wind resistance, crucially, so you can draft behind other riders to save energy. Unlike the real world, the riders will also get awarded power-ups, and our commentary team will talk you through those shortly. Now, this is going to be a points race, short and fast, so it's not about which rider necessarily crosses the finish line first, it's about which rider can amass the most points over the course of the race, sprinting at a point on each and every lap. Three points for the first rider across the line, two for second, one for third, and double points on the finish line. Which type of rider is going to win? Well, you either need a really big engine to burn all your competitors off your wheel, or you need to have a cracking sprint and the ability to recover quickly between those efforts. Whichever type of rider you are, you're also going to need to be tactically astute, which is something the coaches are really going to be looking out for. It's a key attribute for a professional cyclist, and it's not always one that can be taught. The women are up first in the Zwift arena, so as they warm up, it's over to Dave Toll and Hannah Walker. 
Welcome to the fabulous Crit City for this, the Zwift Academy Points Race. I'm Dave Toll, and sitting alongside me for the duration of these next two high-stakes races is the one and only Hannah Walker. Welcome, Hannah. Thanks, Dave. High stakes indeed. I've been on the ground here in southern Spain watching all week, and I can tell you these are much closer battles for these two contracts than you might at first think. And this race is an important next challenge for our finalists on their quest to become a pro rider for either Canyon Shram or Alpazinda Kerning next season. You're not wrong, Anna. And you may ask yourself, what are the pro team judges looking for in this swift race? Well, being up close and personal, they get the opportunity to see each rider both physically and tactically, both in the room and on a screen, all at the same time. That helps you understand if they are a racer or not. And at the same time, see what power they can put out in a bunch sprint. It's truly a unique opportunity that you don't get when following a race in a team car. First up is the women's race. Talk us through what they have in front of them and how this is going to work, Hannah. Well, Dave, five laps of the downtown Dolphin course here in Crit City. It's a fast circuit course, one of my personal favourites, and one in which always dishes up the drama. It's a points race with sprints to the arch at the top of Brook Hill, where riders will collect points. Three, two and one for the first, second and third across the line. Five laps means five sprints, so there's lots of points on offer, but it doesn't stop there. The final sprint is for the finish line where double points are awarded, six, four and two points. So it could all come down to that last finish line sprint. Okay, girls, a short and not very sweet race coming up. Give it your all and good luck. And they're underway. The four finalists, Neela Lang, Alex Morris, Elena Wuyan and also Kiera Donny are four finalists in this Swift Academy. They made that right turn. They're on to the brick climb where it starts to ramp up. We're at 4%, 5%. Here is Alex Maurice, the British rider who's trying to go clear, try and break her opponents at the moment, putting down some big, big watts there. 13.5 watts per kilogram, and she goes through that arch with ease. So one lap in, one sprint down, and Alex has got the lead on three. Kiara second with two, and Elena is in third right now, sitting on one point with Neela yet to score. These sprints come thick and fast. There's one sprint a lap, double points at the finish. So you need to compete every time if you want to win the race. Let's have a quick look and a reminder of the power-ups available for the riders. Awarded at the lap arch, the riders will have a chance to collect a feather, which reduces a rider's weight by 10% for 15 seconds. A draft power-up, which can be used to full effect to hold a wheel when a rider attacks. And finally, the all-important aero power-up. Most powerful when used right and gives the riders an aero boost. It really does feel like things are starting to bubble. Here goes Elena Wu Yan with an aero boost power up. She gains half a second at the moment as she makes that right turn into Brick Climb. Is she going to be able to take maximum points to take the three at the arch? At the moment, she's got a fierce challenge from Alex Maurice, who's coming up behind. She gets out of the saddle again, another injection of pace, but Maurice is going to take the maximum points again. Second lap, second sprint, and for the second time, we've had the same result. Alex three, Kiara two, Elena one, and still to score is Lang. She really does need to get some points on the board soon, or this is over for her. Alex is gonna be on a roll right now. Uh, she is more than punching above her weight right now. You can see that uh, the Italian has been testing her, but ultimately, it looks like it's going to be Neela again with the power up. Nila Lang with the aero power up at the moment. Kiera Donny is just following her every move. Elena Wu Yan following the move from Alex Maurice, the British rider. She drops the feather uh, lightweight power up at the moment. Percent gradients. She starts to open things up, but here goes Donny. She rounds the corner. Is she going to take the points? The Italian. 
Ryder takes maximum points then. Elena Wu Yan taking the two. Seven apiece there for Alex and Kiana. So this is going to be a thriller, folks. Buckle up. It's going to go right down to the line. There you go. The Italian now, as you say, injecting some tempo, but they respond so well. Boy, there it does not seem to be a weak link in this group of four. I'm really interested at the moment, Maurice, Kiera, Donny, they're going to be watching each other with seven apiece with still uh, more intermediate sprints to come. And how I've seen it at the moment, you, you take a look at Kiera Donny and she's the oldest rider within this selection process. She's the oldest finalist at 37 years of age. And she's looking for that professional contract. She knows that she is the strongest in this competition. She knows that she's been consistent throughout all the challenges. And hey, the age doesn't play a part in this. We've seen Annemiek van Vleuten winning the inaugural Tour de France Femme Avec Swift this year at 39 years of age. Age is nothing but a number and Donny is showing her worth here. I love it, Hannah. I really do. On the flip side of that coin, riders like Alex, she can hold her own in a group like this. She's definitely a next level athlete. All right. Well, here we go. And an attack. Here we go, Hannah. They have hit out. Wu Yan taking her opportunity at the moment. She rounds the right-hand corner onto Brick Climb. Take a look at those watts, 509 watts at the moment. Wu Yan with the aero boost at the moment. Maurice into the slipstream. Elena Wu Yang, the Harvard grad, racing out of New York City, shows her Zwift craft to get back in touch, take the three points, ties Kiara Donning. It really speaks to how deep she can dig. She is scraping the bottom of the wall now. She fights back. This kid is all heart right now, Hannah. Alex Morris is holding her power up. She hasn't used it. Every other rider is using their power up, sprinting for the arch each time as they know they'll get a new power up as they go through the arch, but not Alex. She's handicapping herself, Hannah. She is, Dave, and I can't work out why. Kiara and Elena are both very experienced with races, but Alex keeps taking points. She is obviously so strong in the sprint. Will she pay for all that extra effort, though? Okay, going into the final lap, Alex on nine. She has a two-point lead over Kiara and Elena, who are both tied at seven points. It's all for Nila, but she won't give up without a fight. But it looks like now, I think we've got three riders that are really in contention, especially remembering that we've got the double points out here. Little bit of luck goes a long, long way. They say luck is when preparation meets opportunity. I think that that's all in play right now. Lang has got to attack, and I have a feeling she's going to throw one big effort at them as the German rider goes into monster mode and they cover. Hannah, these ladies have been incredible, irrepressible out here. It looks like the Italian now has put the accelerator down on the floorboard, Hannah. She certainly has, and she's trying to take her opportunity. These riders will be able to see how are each other feeling. Sprint number five, and one last time up Brick Hill. Alex still hasn't used her power up. It's like she's racing with the brakes on, and this could cost her the race. Here we go. And it's Lang attacking. Morris was there, and it looks like now it's going to all come down to this. Lang doing what she can. I love the heart that we're seeing from the German rider. She will not lie down, but look at this. Coming over the top is going to be Kiana Doni, and it's Doni now. She'll have the points. If she can hold on, the worst she can do is a tie for the win. She's finally using her power up oh, to get back in touch. But just like racing on the road, getting back on is much easier said than done. And she's going to have to burn every match she's got and use her power up to get back up there. Teamwork going on between Neela Lang and Kier Donny there, where they've got themselves together here. Can they claw themselves back? Is it going to all be too late? Is it going to be a fight between these two riders? And will Donny go on to take the maximum points? Double points on the finish line, don't forget. And I tell you what, she knows that she doesn't have to beat anyone else. It's just hanging here, doesn't need to, and she's going to do it anyways, doubling down. Italiano, this is unbelievable. Can Neela Lang hold on? 
Montana. It's a command performance from Kiera Donnie. That's the champion standard. Okay, Beth and Magnus, my word, <laughs> like a tough race. First impressions, Beth? Well, it was really even. I did like that Eleanor did that attack and went for early because she thought, okay, but she has nothing to lose. So that was actually impressive. Um, I think Alex did really well, quite consistent. She probably paid for it in that last sprint. Um, but I mean, kudos also to Kiara to try to, maybe she timed it to plan like this. And I think Nelly was just all out even. So there, there you get a look at the points breakdown. Really deserves a, a pat on the back. Kiara Doni, you are the champion, the gold standard. No question. Alex, bright future for you. Elena Wuyan doing the United States proud out here, that's for sure. And uh, I must say that Neela Lang, there's no question that this world is your oyster. You can do it all. I was planning to do an uh, early attack, but my legs were hurting on each sprint, so I decided to stay in the group. And no one really let anybody go. It was kind of all together, everybody going for the sprints each Yeah, lap. correct. It was pretty tough. Yeah, it was good fun. Um, fun. Yeah, yeah, I think. Didn't look like fun. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it would kind of suit me slightly better than the other riders, because I know they're a lot lighter than me, so longer efforts up climbs um, might not suit me such. But yeah, I tried my best with the sprints and held on for the first few. Um, I was a bit disappointed at the end that I couldn't keep up with uh, Kiara and Nelly. You're pretty much up there in all the sprints, so you have to be pretty happy with how you rode that. Yeah, I'm actually like really happy with my performance. I think like given my strengths and my profile, I raced smartly, tried to conserve energy when we were not sprinting. I think I saw the results. I had the lowest watts per kilo um, average, which means I was decent at conserving energy and just using it where it mattered. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. I really needed to perform well today. Um, I'm, I don't have any regrets. Next up is the men's race. How are these guys looking to you, Hannah? Ooh, this is a hard one to call, Dave. They're so closely matched on a course like this where sprinting matters, but where one of them could go long. If it stays together, Cooper should be the one to watch. Cooper Sayers, I'm really curious to see how he goes in the race this evening because he's a rider who knows the process of the Zwift Academy. He was in the Zwift Academy final last year and I think he's really taking it all in his stride as uh, Paradigm starts to open things up for the first intermediate sprint. He's trying to get a gap on the others and he's the one who's already got a couple of bike lengths now. All right, let's see if he can drive the first nail home. There's three points and he grabs them, Hannah. We'll take a look at how that scores, but that's the way to open up your account. You can see the roll through happening. Now we will go back and tally the points. It's going to be Vergalito coming through. It looks like in second and Hoffman through for third. We see that unfortunately we did have to scratch a rider here as we didn't have uh, an opportunity to get uh, have Will Loudon with us, and we certainly will see him back in the future. That kid's got a lot of heart. Everyone was super impressed. But back to the action now. Tactically, what is their plan coming into this race? How are things going to work out? The intensity of these sprints that they're, they're taking on, because the lap is only 1.9 kilometers long as we pass the finish arch for the first time and the first opportunity for these riders to take a power up. If you go too early and you put yourself into the red zone, there is no coming back from that. So they know that the points are a crucial moment. I think for me, if anyone's wanting to try and make a breakaway, it's going to be on that penultimate lap where they're going to try and make a make a move. If you go now, it's far too early. It's, it's not likely that they're going to be able to remain and stay away for this duration. So this is going to be Jasper Paradise. He picked up three points. Last time it was Cooper Sayers getting two and Vergolito getting one. It goes back and forth, back and forth out here. You can see the power ups being played. Back to you, Hannes. These guys are looking now to make a mark. And it's going to be close on the dime. Paradigms, does he come through and snatch the maximum points there? Interesting because it was Vergalito who started to open things up and you saw how crucial the power-ups were where she turned, made that right-hand turn onto the cobbles on that 4% incline. This is hotly contested. 
this race, this is exactly like an Olympic track format, to tell you the truth, as far as, uh, you know, points distribution and risk reward, all of those formulas at play. These riders now are really relying on something that you, it's, it's inside your DNA or it isn't. Here we go, here we go, they're galloping. Can he do it three times in a row? It's a flurry of feather power-ups as each rider drops their weight in game by 10% for 15 seconds. This one's gonna score big, Jasper, oh boy. That was close on the line there. That was close on the line between Sayers, Paradise and Hoffman. Jasper wins the sprint again, takes the three, Cooper with the two, and his neighbor from Adelaide, Lucas Hoffman, takes the one. 25-year-old from Italy, and he goes straight over the top of these three riders. A big, big attack over the top here. Holding the gap, putting down this sustained power and staying away is not easy. But Luca is playing to his strengths. He knows he doesn't have the sprint to beat Jasper and Cooper, so he's simply ridden away from them. Every race has this dynamic, very small window. Back to you, Hannah. And he's got an aero power-up. Take a look at this. Using this power-up to perfection, he got that at the previous uh, banner arch at that lap. And he's going to keep that for 15 seconds, reducing the CDA by 25%. And now he's gone, he's got distance. Five seconds to these three riders and what the, the, the situation here. It does make some strange noises though, is that a problem? I was not expecting it. <laughs> I heard it before, but not in this setup. Let me bring you up to date here then, as the points have all gone Jasper's way so far. So the Belgian here has nine points. That's a perfect score right now. However, he's definitely behind the eight ball here. Cooper Sayers is sitting on four points. Lucas Hoffman, so the two Australians right there are in that sandwich between Jasper and then Luca. But this is Luca Vergolito. He's gone all in, he's been in the bank. He's got the money, and now he's in the getaway car. And it looks like the Australians are gonna have to work together to lead up this chase. Luca takes the maximum through that sprint arch, but who will win the race for second? It's Jasper again. He keeps showing Cooper and the judges that he has better legs than him, or so tonight at least. This is one to go, so all right. He's going to be looking now at the three behind him. Can he do it and hold on with the valuable double points waiting at the finish line? Six points for the winner, four for second, and two for third. If you're Jasper, there's enough points back in this group. If you start running those numbers here, it's Vergalito on the final climb right now. He's gone all in. Three points into the pocket of Vergalito. He takes his tally closer to Paradines at the moment as they went a brick climb on that 4% incline. And look, Sayers wanting to make his move. Sayers is trying to try and bridge across and get away from Paradines and Hoffman. He's on brick, uh, brick climb at the moment. He'll make that right-hand turn. Can he pick up the two points? I think he holds on for those two points. And it's Hoffman who oh. picks up the one. He's gonna go to Vergolito in the Zwift Academy Finals. The 25-year-old Italian round the final hairpin with 180 meters to go. He's got the finish line in sight. The Italian is gonna take the maximum points. He's gonna take six. He's got the 14, but behind is where the racing is gonna be close. Arms aloft for the Italian Vergolito. He takes the victory. What a well-timed performance tonight. But here, this is where the performance of this trio behind the round the bottom corner, Sayers starts to open up 12.9 watts per kilogram. He, is he going to have some challenge from the Belgian Paradines? The Belgian is coming round him. It's going to be close on the line. Who gets it? Oh, Dave, so close on the line. We're going to take a look at a replay here. Actually, I believe they've got that queued up. Uh, it was fast and furious, no doubt about it. You can see that's going to be Cooper Sayers there, the Australian flag. 
So we'll have a chance to, to review everything here, but uh, this is the guys coming in. There's critical points right now. I have to say that this is Cooper on the front right now. As you take a look at the guys, it's going to be his countrymen. They're making the charge to come up and take third out of the four racers out here. So Jasper went from Hannah a win, a win, a win, a second, and then uh, to the back of this group of four. Actually, that's going to be a, a good look at how look. close this was. Wow, that is close there. So the final standings look like this. Luca wins on 14, Jesper oh so close on 13, Lucas jumps to third on eight, and Cooper finishes on the bottom with seven. Why, why aren't you happy with second? <laughs> I want to be the first one, clear, yeah. Yeah. Clear. So, yeah. It's pretty, pretty rough. Uh, the, there was always going to be one person that just tried to attack off the front and avoid the sprint. So I uh, just try to time my sprints as best as possible. And obviously, uh, yeah, didn't get all of them right. Just, uh, yeah, tried to get as much as I could right. OK, so we are in the Zwift arena in the aftermath. It's still hot in here, isn't it? Let's <laughs> yeah. put it that way. The riders have been suffering. What were your, what were your take homes from it, Magnus? Um, well, there were some technical mistakes, I would say, in terms of on the racing, not using power-ups. Uh, I think Alex missed out on, on a few of those, although her power numbers were, were really good. I guess that's ultimately what, what you want to see, right? Yeah, I, that's, that's what I'm looking for anyway in, in, a, in a rider. So she's, she did some, some really good stuff and, um, you know, very good on the, uh, on the technical drills that we had this morning as well behind the car. And, you know, getting bottles from the car, etc., etc. She was she was very good. Uh, I think Kiara rode a very tactically smart race in that she waited for that final lap and got the points and um, you know the double points on the finish line as well. Uh, and nearly as well, just sort of hung back and, and waited for that that final lap and trying to get there. Yeah, and the guys' race was nowhere near as competitive. Luca kind of he. I wouldn't say he demolished the field in terms of power, but he made it look easy, didn't he? The way he attacked, he chose the right moment, one move, and, and that was it. Did that, did that surprise you, given his lack of racing experience? He chose the right moment and uh, he smashed the others immediately. Yeah, and Christoph, when we were speaking before the race, you said, Cooper. Cooper's going to win, <laughs> and Cooper Cooper came last. Which, you know, I'm not I'm not pinning that on you as a mistake, no, no, but he disappointed, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, I have to say it honestly. Uh, Cooper disappointed me a bit in this points race. Um, we had the experience with him from last year that he is a real punchy rider. This was a race less than 15 minutes. Um, the the approach was also a real points race. They just went in for the sprints and in between the sprints they were just riding 150 watts. And Jesper, I, I personally was quite surprised to see that. He was putting out some big numbers, but crikey. His, his cadence, his, his yes, bike, I thought he was about to destroy his Canyon Air Road. Yes, he was not uh, <laughs> gentle for his bike, not at all. Uh, uh, would that sprint work in the real world, no. riding at 70 RPM? No. Um, I think it's very difficult to turn, honestly. Yeah, okay. And, and Beth, what about the, the morning session? So it sounds like the riders that didn't have the experience had the, the wherewithal to ask for advice and then nailed it. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, it is a fair assessment. We did a few little tests in the earlier challenges. They had asked for feedback. Um, and today, actually, you know, second time around, they all did much better. It's just nice to see it's what you want that, you know, someone's willing to say, actually, you know, I don't know what to do or, and, you know, give them feedback, they take it on board and they execute it the next time. The so bottles actually, from the team car was an interesting exercise. We've obviously marked them already. Um, Lucas came a cropper, didn't he? But is that something that you can teach? Yes, that's what we see in the mm -hmm. team as well. Okay. Some are very good and some they stay, yeah. Yeah, okay. They, are, they, they look a bit scared also. Yeah, and, and how much is the bottle cost, the one that he dropped? How much is it? <laughs> <laughs> Two euros? <laughs> okay, right, we'll, we'll, he'll, he'll get the bill later on. Anyway. Um, 
Right, now, of course, you have to go away and make your decisions of rider of the day, but also today, we have the much more difficult decision of the rider that's going to be leaving the competition. An added complication this morning that we've already lost a rider from the men's side of things, but we now have parity, we now have four. But, um, but yeah, is there anyone you think already that you don't have to name names? Mm. I think so. I think we know. OK, well, we'll go and uh, meet the riders. OK, finalists, you have made it through day three. It's under your belts. A tricky day, I think, if not super taxing, with those technical skills drills in the morning and then that points race on Zwift in the evening, which, to be fair, was short and particularly vicious. Yeah, girls, you had a super tough race and you left it all out there. But boys, maybe a little more, bit more of a tactical race for you, because I actually think the girls put out more power than you. I, th I think they did <laughs> indeed. Right, now we of course have to celebrate the winners of that points race. So congratulations to Luca and Chiara as well. That was a great ride, both of you. But most importantly, who impressed the judges the most today? The riders of the day are... Alex and Luca. Congratulations both. Alex, they... Yeah, yeah. Alex, they, the judges said that you performed really well, well out on the tactical stuff on the road and they were really impressed with how you approached the race in the afternoon. Uh, sorry, can I just interrupt there? Alex, we were all screaming at you internally to hit the power-up <laughs> button. We it were. was big and blue and it really would have helped. But anyway, amazing power output all the same. And Luca, they were really impressed with how you approached the race tactically and physically, so well done. Oh boy. Now, we talked this morning that people would be leaving the Zwift Academy today. We obviously have to spare a thought for poor old Will with uh, going home earlier today. But unfortunately, two more riders are going to be going home from the Zwift Academy tonight. The riders that will be leaving the competition are... Elena and Cooper. Really sorry, both of you. You've done brilliantly, but it's the end of the road here at Swift Academy for you. Cooper, all right, mate. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, today's race probably should have suited me a bit better, so the expectation of a result should have suited me better, um, but didn't deliver. So, yeah, it was a brilliant start to the morning. Technically, it was exceptional, um, but, yeah, just didn't have the end result that they were probably searching for. I went in just wanting to put everything out there. Um, I knew there would be eliminations today um, and I, I think I did fairly well in that race but obviously not enough. Um, the other three girls are just so strong and I could already see that like from the past two days and out on the road um, so I think I'm not like necessarily surprised that I was eliminated first. Um, of course, disappointed because you always want to, you know, advance to the next round. Um, but yeah, just it was a great experience while it lasted, um, and I've learned so much, and will take a lot out of this experience with me. That felt brutal, didn't it? It was. Yeah, didn't like that. Did it take you by surprise who the judges picked? It did a little bit. I really wasn't expecting Elena to go. I think she really impressed me in that Zwift race tonight. Wasn't expecting it from her, but I think Cooper he had a lot to prove this year and. I just didn't step up to the mark. No, he didn't, did he? I guess too little too late for Elena. But clearly, the competition is hotting right up. We are down to just six finalists. And tomorrow is going to be a seriously cool day where they're going head to head against the pros. But after that, man, I'm frankly, I need a beer. You want to come? Yeah, uh, actually, I'm busy. Um, Vanderpool's asked me to go and teach him how to do some like bunny hops and wheelies and stuff. So. Really? I better go, yeah. It's, yeah. it's probably waiting for me, actually. See you in a bit. Can I... Can I come? Would that, uh, would that be OK? He, he actually said definitely don't invite Sai, so probably best you sit out of this one. More than 160,000 riders from around the globe started the Zwift Academy. A four-week cycling challenge on the virtual roads of Zwift 
For most, it's a personal quest to build fitness or for fun, but for others, it's a competition with the ultimate prize. Having completed the Zwift Academy in their own homes, the very best have now been selected for the grand final and brought to Spain, where just 10 riders remain in the fight to become a professional cycler. There's no opportunity quite like this. After five gruelling days of intense competition, we will know who will be joining two of the world's best cycling teams, Alpa Sinderkernig and Canyon SRAM. I think the rider needs to be good enough to compete at every race. This is the Zwift Academy Finals. It's going to be super challenging, best person will win. In day four, the finalists go head to head against each other. He thinks he's the fastest in the sprint. And then the pros. What is he waiting for? This is the Zwift Academy Finals. Good morning, finalists. Today is another double day, only in reverse this time. We're going to start with 90 minutes on Zwift, which doesn't sound like an awful lot, but remember, you get more bang for your buck indoors, so it's the equivalent of doing much longer than if you were outdoors. That's right. So we want to introduce a little bit of fatigue into the legs, OK? Ahead of this afternoon's challenge, which is going to be race drills. So I need you to picture, if you will, the final four kilometres of a World Tour race. First of all, you're in a break of three, so you're going to need to race against each other to try to win, OK? And then, after you've got your breath back, you're going to be teammates again, and the three of you are going to need to work together in order to beat a professional cyclist. Girls, you're going to have to beat Paulina Royakas. Guys, you're going to have to beat Matthew van der Poel. Oh, that is going to be good. OK, now only you know what your race winning weapons are, OK? And you are going to need to deploy them perfectly in order to show the judges that you've got what it takes to win bike races. A very important skill to have. Good luck. Remember, you need to work together to beat the pros, but you also need to beat your fellow finalists. That's right. And I can't tell you how jealous I am. So if any of you need a slightly out of shape fourth teammate, I'll be waiting around at the cafe for you. <laughs> you laughing at me? Oh, I mean, it'll be really interesting to see. I think, obviously, tactically, she's really experienced, so she'll know how to race and play to her strengths. But hopefully, we'll be able to work together really well. and hopefully come away with a result. I don't know, maybe I can help Alex pushing her um, sprint uh, in order to beat Pauline. I've actually got a quite a good kick. Um, I haven't really got to show it during the week. So I'm thinking they're expecting me to go like early um, and try and get away, but I'm hoping to, for it to come down to a sprint. I think this is my moment to stand out and show the coaches uh, what I can do. It's, it's going to be ser serious now. Um, one of us uh, has left the race, so has left the uh, competition. So um, I don't want to be the next one. My name is Jasper Paradijs. I'm 27 years old. <laughs> and I live in Pepingen, a small town in Belgium. I think my first bike ride was when I was five years old. Start racing when I was 12. When I was 16 years old, I won the Belgian National Championships. Directly one week after, after that race, I crashed. I crashed very hard. I broke my knee, my elbow, my wrist. I was in a, in a wheelchair for four months. After several months, I was able to walk again. When on a, on a young age, you, when you win races, you are always dreaming about the highest thing you can achieve. In You watch the pros on TV and, and you are always thinking about how, how would it be when, when I'm a pro rider. 
in August 2020, I did my first race on Zwift and, uh, and it was immediately uh, successful. I won that, that race. I became part of an eSports team. Herodians here now making a move as well. That's one of our Swift Academy finalists actually that just got announced actually yesterday and Paradine's looking to show what he's worth out here today. Is Jasper going across? As a cyclist you need a lot of resilience. That the Swift Academy is maybe a consequence of all the crashes and disadvantage that I that al already happened. I haven't talked about winning, I don't want to think about it, but I still want it. <laughs> Magnus, I was expecting a relatively easy session, but there's some quite punchy little intervals in there. Can you explain your thinking, why they're doing this? So we're trying to build up a, a certain amount of workload in, um, in the rider's legs, but still giving them enough time to, to recover physically. Um, you know, the Swift is a great platform from, from that perspective, is that we can increase an awful lot of workload in a very short space of time, um, which gives us the, you know, the outcome that we want. Okay, so basically they can train hard, and then actually have a little bit more time to recover ahead yeah. of what's to come. While still having that heavy feel in the legs. <laughs> While the riders are finishing off their Zwift session, let me give you a sneak peek on today's second challenge. The women will be taking on a four kilometre winding circuit race before sprinting to the finish line here at the top of this uphill drag. The men, meanwhile, will take on a flat 3.5 straight course. In both cases, they'll first race against each other and then they'll team up to race against the pro. But what will this tell us about a pro cycling wannabes? Well, timing and tactics are everything at the sharp end of the race. So let's see if any of them have what it takes. Once the finalists were out on the road, it was time to tell them exactly what lay in store for the second part of their challenge. Okay, finalists, you've seen the circuit now, Magnus. So we're looking for a race between the three of you. First across the finish line, which is on the top of that little hill. So race against each other, play tactical games, whatever you want to do. Um, but be careful, uh, it's still open roads, don't take any risks. In the opening kilometre, Kiara has come to the front to set the tempo. She's riding quickly, but it's not enough to trouble the others, and it's playing straight into the hands of Alex, who is the strongest sprinter. This will be interesting to see um, who's going to be the first to attack. It's going to be that sort of... Uh, yeah, who's going to make We're going to work together, uh, or are we going to just actually hit each other. Mm. Alex looks like she's uh, sitting on already. Mr. Mr. Turn there. Yeah. This is kind of what I want to see as well, is how cool are they and... It'll be interesting to see who, who will conserve and who will mm. just keep riding the front. Like already, it looks like Yara's maybe been on the front a little too long here. These are strange tactics. It's hard to know what's going through Kiara and Neela's minds, as the longer they leave it, the more assured Alex will be of taking the win. This is why I also, like, it's really important to see, you know, how do they, how do they approach a race like this? I mean, it's ultimately, it's, it's the final 3K of a, of a road race, yeah. really, in the breakaway. Um, have you got that sort of, cool, calm, collected. Yeah. Um, are you willing to lose the bike race to win it by playing the tactical game and potentially upsetting the other riders in your group by, by being a bit yeah. bit nasty? So right hand turn coming up with a stop sign, so just make sure you check, don't take any risks. Riders are through the town. Do you think they should be looking to try and get Alex off the back and do some work? Definitely, definitely should have gotten her off the back by now. Now, I mean, this is more looking like a lead up for Alex. And I think 
based on the numbers that I've seen, she is the one with the biggest peak. Mm. So as long as she survives the little drag, I would look for her to go first into that. There's a tight right-hander just before about 150, maybe 200 meters from the line. Neela is now on the front, but again, just controlling the pace. Alex is getting an armchair ride. It's really interesting that none of them, the other two, have attacked or tried not to get. Even looking back at each other, no. looking what they're thinking, just happy to sit on the front and. Yeah. You know, they're pressing on quite a bit, so. Oh, they're definitely going hard, aren't yeah. they? This is interesting, sort of watching them kind of push the corners a little bit. Alex was really good on the wheels through that as well. She's not like Lucky not left any kind of space. That was just, yeah, I got this. Neela is not going to win from this position. She needs to do something. Uh, Neela parks herself in the. Uh, Kiara doesn't want to come over the top now. Do have one kid to go now? Good line from Alex there as well. She... You see how she took that, yeah. like she came out and then basically undercut them on the exit and was able to straighten up the biking in on the power earlier, which meant that she was on the wheel already when they were. Yeah, not losing any speed. No. Nelly's just winding it up with Alex and Kiara sitting there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one thing, you know, when you're we're coming up to that the final little drag, you know. So I expect Kiara to go, but yeah, I think she goes. Yeah, Alex going with her. We got to crash up here. We got to crash up here. Okay, okay. Kiara is down. Alex finishes the race. Uh, I eat the hand. It's a horrible way to finish, and everyone, riders, teams, and even the crew, are shaken. But already, it's time for the guys. You just are in an individual rider in the next race, all against each other. We expect something really tactical. You know the course. Yeah, we'll see who wins. Okay, let's go. Oh, this will be cool. The contrast to the women's race is immediate. No one is willing to push the pace. This is a game of cat and mouse. Luca is off with Jesper on his wheel. Lucas needs to close this gap. Lucas has let the wheel go a little bit, hasn't he? Oh, Ali. 
The other one should attack now, eh? Yeah. Our Italian friend. I asked for how it played it a bit more cool. All together again. Come on, Luca, you gotta go. to go. I up. Uh, done. Come on, come on. Uh, yeah. That was the moment for Lucas to use his momentum and launch a fierce counter-attack, but he's missed it. But it looks that Lucas is not in the game. He's just talking. Yeah. About. He's just in last position and he just following. Yeah. It feels like he's got a game plan, a strategy, and he's not he's not moving from it, right? No. That was the and moment. He, yeah. And he stays there till the finish. They haven't talked, eh? <laughs> Otherwise, he would go now. The Italian is on the in the lead, eh? Now it's Luca who needs to attack. He has the weakest sprint, so he's got to do something before it's too late. Then he has to do they something to win, but we are almost at 1k from the finish. Here he goes. And Lucas only followed. <laughs> it's a gamble. He thinks he's the fastest in the sprint. And this was also a moment, eh? Yeah. Watch yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, good moment on the other side of the road. Lucas is not quick enough getting on the wheels, is no, he? No, no. Ah, come on, Lucas, you had a chance. I don't have to go. Yeah, this will be a final sprint now. And Jasper needs to bring my money home now. Jasper launches the sprint. Lucas responds, but it's too little, too late. I hope I have my money. The photo finish shows that Jasper has taken it on the line. Now it's back to the women, and it's time to take on the pro. Okay, team, what are the tactics? Um, I guess that Pauline is a good sprinter. Uh, she's very fast. So um, Nele and me will try to push a bit uphill, and then uh, we can help Alex do doing the last uh, sprint for the win. Paulina, how are you feeling? A little bit nervous? No, I'm not nervous, but I just, yeah, I like it. It's, um, it'll be a challenge also for me, but um, yeah, let's see what they will uh, do. And uh, yeah, I have a little plan, so. I'll... Excellent, brilliant. All right, well, good luck. How are they going to do it? I would like to see them try to get rid of they go like one two against Paulina. But having listened to them there with their plan, I think this this one two, I think if it was Alex and someone with race experience, a second one with race experience like Alex, then maybe they could yeah. but I would say Alex again in a sprint. Yeah. It looks like they're just gonna go for leading out Alex and leave Paulina yeah. on the back. So they must be pretty confident in 
Alex is sprinting, not too bothered about. Yeah, now it's good. Okay. Just oh. wait, Nelly, wait. There we go. Wait. Oh, then. Yeah. Interesting tactics here. Neela has let Kiara drift off the front, which will force Pauline to respond. Go, go, go. Yeah, she needs to bring Alex back there now. If the if the plane has mm. print card. No. Uh, oh yeah. A bit more of a tactical one this one, so mm. <laughs> it's not like full gas. If you were in this team, how would you approach it to beat Paulina? One, two, one, two, one, two. Just keep going? Yeah. Obviously, we've had maybe two attacks now. Yeah, but the ten tentative attacks has not been fully committed. Fully mm. committed. Ooh. Oh, Paulina's Oh, up. yeah. Nice. Pauline launches a big move and means business. Kiara is the first to respond. Come on, girls. Do you think they were expecting that? No. I don't think they were expecting no. that, no. But Kiara closed it. Mm -hmm. Now. Someone needs to go now. Yeah. Go, go, go. That was Neela's opportunity, yeah. Neela needed to go next. They have to soften up Paulie. And we've got to get into oh. Alex's off. It's Alex who goes. This is a big move, and she is fully committed. Interesting. Just don't take any risk on the descent here, OK? Keep it on the right-hand side of the road. Okay. Yeah, it's Alex. She, she was. Uh, yeah, she came down. You're okay. No, sorry. Don't, don't okay. be sorry. sorry. No, don't. No, don't. That's okay. Yeah. And all the time. Okay. It's part of my process. It's, it's, it's you. Okay. Are you okay? I think you will be down. okay. Okay. Now sit down. Just... Is she okay? Yeah, don't worry about it. Are you okay? I don't, yeah. I don't want all this filming. The post-race analysis has shown that there was a fresh oil slick on the corner and there was no escaping it. Alex goes down, leaving Pauline with nowhere to go. Everyone is shaken, but there is still one race left to run. So guys, here it is, the finish line. Here you can beat for the first time in your career, Mathieu. Uh on a road race, uh, keep it safe. It's a 3K race, keep it safe, but fast. You guys are one team, so if one of you guys wins, you beat him. That's the challenge. He's on his own in the last 3K final of a race. You guys are three teammates. We are looking forward for the race. Let's go. Yeah, come on, Porte Fable. <laughs> Ja, zo gaat het ook, hè? Ja, alles. Ah ja. In 3, 2, 1, up! First up, and Lucas finally takes a turn on the front, and it is a big move. Van der Poel is responding and is going to be nervous okay. now. Straight out of the blocks, then. Attack. Luca goes next. Perhaps the guys have learned from the mistakes of the previous race. Luca? <laughs> two two Luca. attacks in the first 300 yeah. meters. Oh, Mathieu on the inside. Intimidating a bit. It's Luca at the back, isn't it? Yes. 
van der Poel takes command on the front. Can he keep the finalists under control? Lucas is letting the wheel go again. He could use this to launch the perfect attack, but no. With a bit of speed, ah, well, could have been good from the back, but he doesn't push through. To be fair, how fast are we going? 70. 70 k an hour. It's not much you can. <laughs> Where would you go? <laughs> so, Mathieu on the front, 70 k an hour. That's a good move, isn't it? <laughs> Special tactic from Lucas. Okay, someone's got to go on this drag, surely. Two, yeah, two yeah. Ks, two Ks. It's Jasper. Jasper instead has another shot. Hey, he's probably faster than 70 RPM. Too easy. Bam. Lucas got to go. Ali. Ali. What is he waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> Mathieu just keeps the speed up. It's really hard yeah. to surprise him. Van der Poel is on the front. Luca tries one last move, but at 72 k an hour, can anyone come around Van der Poel? Lucas is the one who's in the hot seat for attacking, isn't he? But this is keeping. Yeah, up. but he is always three, four meters from the wheel, so I don't know how economically he actually still is. He's just going to try and outspeed. Or he is waiting his minute, his moment. One K to go. One kilometer to go. It's at the end of Flanders. Is oh, that Luca? Yeah, that's it. Uh, he tried to surprise a bit. Good. That was really, really good. What did you think, guys? I think it was a nice effort. Yeah. It was fast. <laughs> I would have expected uh, a better attack from Luca, to be honest. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, but I think just much yeah. you yeah. gave them not much opportunity. No, but there was no real attack either. Eh? By keeping the speed that high, new money to spend. <laughs> Yeah, congratulations. That Thanks. was one of your best victories, I would have thought. Yeah, I had to go uh, pretty all out to get the victory, but I'm glad uh, I could win. I knew if I had the pace pretty high, it would be really difficult. That was my luck today. There you go, it was luck, guys. Well done. <laughs> right, thanks, Mathieu. Thank you. Thank Cheers, you. guys. Well done. After a big and very eventful day on the bike, the judges have a lot to discuss back at base. Okay, folks, well, that was a day of two halves, wasn't it? The Zwift ride and then the racing in the afternoon. Can we have an injury update first, Beth? Because, like, those were, those were two bad crashes, weren't they? Is everyone okay? Everyone's mostly okay. Chiara crashed the first time. She's okay. She was able to, we got treated by the medic and was able to gather herself and uh, get clearance to go in the second race. In the second one, Alex unfortunately came down on corner there in some slippery section and yeah Pauline had not really anywhere else to go but over the top um, unfortunately she broke her wrist ah. and Alex has yeah some pretty deep uh, skin wounds I would say so she's waiting to see how she is okay well fingers crossed that Alex manages to, to continue there and 
In terms of the racing that we saw, let's talk through the first race, shall we? How impressed were you, in fact, with what you saw, Magnus, out there? Well, I think especially Alex really played it as really quite smart. The other two were more or less happy to to just tow her around to, towards that final little drag up towards the finish. Didn't really make too much of an attempt to get Alex to get to the front, which was a little bit surprising to, to be honest with you, considering that they know how good her sprint is. Alex especially was really impressed me with how she picked things up and you know that, that sort of split second decisions yeah really interesting and that was quite a sprint at the end wasn't it it was a long sprint but really good numbers as well so I, I was very happy with when I saw that yeah that's great then and, and guys let's start with uh, the race where the academy guys were going head to head we were talking in the car weren't we about what tactics Luca would have to use in order to defeat the two guys that have got better sprints than him do you think he played to his strength? I don't think so, to be honest. Luca had to make, make the race as hard as possible to have a real chance to, to beat the other two punchy guys. He didn't play it that hard, in my opinion. And it was possible, but at a certain moment, Lucas was a bit dropped, so it could have been possible, I think, when, when Luca would have started from the beginning. And Jesper was looking really good from, from my perspective. I mean, he won the race, ultimately. It was tight, but he did get the win, didn't he? I think he was the best cyclist race-wise. Maybe he was not the strongest, but he was the first at the line. That's great then. And then what about uh, Lucas? Because you mentioned that he let the wheel go slightly. It seems strange, and it's still the question, was it because of technical reasons that the gap was there? five to ten meters at some points. All of a sudden he was almost dropped. Okay, and then let's go on to, uh, to the race against Mathieu, which was, um, it was fast, wasn't it? Let's put it that yes. way. Um, some great tactics from Mathieu van der Poel, so you've obviously taught him well. Well, Luca had a good go. Yes, but yeah. in the end, Mathieu used the tailwind 100% uh, in his favor and he put the speed so high, there was no option anymore for the others to do anything else than follow. Did, has he spoken to you since then? Has he said, given any feedback on the riders? Like, oh yeah, you, you know, Jesper put up a good sprint or anything like that? He was quite happy with what happy he did. with the situation yeah. that he got. A bit easier for him to control it from, from the top, I guess, but yeah, easy is, a, is an easy word because it was still controlling it with 57 k's average. So, yeah. Yeah. There's probably not many people that could beat him no. in that situation, right? No, there was no way, I think, for the others. And Magnus, let's talk about the two crashes, shall we? Because uh, we've had a chance to review the footage and Alex was involved in both of them. Is there a question mark over her bike handling ability after those, do you think? No, I wouldn't have said so. Um, definitely not. I think uh, the, the first crash that happened, that was a racing incident. As the road is coming around slightly, slightly to the left, it was just one of those moments where they basically touched each other. Alex held it upright and unfortunately Chiara came, came down in it. So. And then, uh, and then the second crash. There was a lot of oil on the road at that point. Um, you know, I got out of the car and straight away started thinking, is my car leaking oil? There was that much on on the road. As they came into that corner, um, they would have picked up oil on the because they came from the outside, obviously, or using the apex, picked up oil as, uh, on their tyres as they came across it. Alex's wheels both let go at the same time. Quite a strange way as well. So she was never going to save that. Let's no. put it that way. And unfortunately, Polina just came came down over the top before the crash. Um, there was some very, very interesting, like, good tactical moves played by, especially by Alex again. Yeah, they, had, they discussed it and their tactic was to try to soften Paulina <laughs> and Alex sprint. And they were actually, like, they were really committed to the win. That thought that was the best option. And you could see actually Alex, like, was coming out with sort of more tactics, okay, but, in, you know, always look out, maybe there's an option for a counter-attack. Chiara mostly did the first couple yeah. of attacks and Nelly was not really doing any. Paulina attacked all of them and Chiara was the one that actually closed it, but then that was the perfect opportunity for Nelly to try to counter-attack over the top. And she didn't do it and you could see, like, Alex was like, this is, you know, this is the moment, like, go now, someone go, someone go. And even though she was the designated sprinter, she's like, I'm going to go. That's really interesting, because actually, in contrast, yep. Lucas did the exact opposite, didn't he? Yeah. We were in the car, screaming at him. Yeah, yeah, correct. This is the moment, we, we, we all saw it, and there were two moments uh, with a really good opportunity for him. And he just waited, waited, waited. And you, you've made a bit of money back today. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs>
Is he allowed back in the game? No. <laughs> bankrupt is bankrupt. <laughs> I'll ask you to go away and deliberate your riders of the day, and we'll catch up again a little bit later on to announce them. Finalists, fourth day of the Zwift Academy, and what an eventful day it has been. Alex, it's great to see you still with us. Really tough luck hitting an oil slick, but you got back up and you lived to fight another day. And Kiara, you too. Again, what a trooper. Got straight back up and carried on with the ride. Guys, your day was slightly less eventful, fortunately, aside from racing much of Vanderpool. He did beat you. But you pushed in pretty hard, and Christopher and Christoph did say that there probably weren't many people on the planet that could have got one over on him today. And then when you went head to head, it was a real close one. But after reviewing the footage, it was Jasper that took the win, and Alex, after holding up that little crash, you continued your sprint to take the victory. So congratulations both. Yeah, well done. That was some good racing. Now, the judges have taken it all into consideration and they have made their decisions for Rider of the Day. They have. The Riders of the Day are... Jasper and Alex. Congratulations both. Yeah, well done. The judges said that you committed to the day really well, you were tactically sharp, and you took the all-important victories. Yeah, right. It's time to go rest up, because tomorrow is, of course, the final day where it's all left to play for. One day left of Zwift Academy Man on, and it is so close. Yes, we're getting Rider of the Day today, well deserved, but it means that all the male contestants now have had Rider of the Day. Yeah, and it's the same in the women's, really. Alex, two back-to-back -back wins. Well, yeah, but she has got her work cut out tomorrow. I mean, they all do, to be fair, because the final challenge is a monster. They're going up the Col Dorates extreme. It's going to be the last opportunity for them to sway the judges' opinions. But let us know down in that comment section below who you think the winner is going to be. Yeah. But it's like, I'm going to actually have to go now. Right. It's okay. What are you doing? Um, Playing Monopoly with Kenny Tram. That sounds cool. Can I come? I like pro cyclists and Monopoly. Mm, no. No. Just no. Hey, Sam, put your salary on the I'm sorry, I'm, I'm really so I'm re I'm sorry! Sorry! More than 160,000 riders from around the globe started the Zwift Academy. A four-week cycling challenge on the virtual roads of Zwift. For most, it's a personal quest to build fitness or for fun. But for others, it's a competition with the ultimate prize. Having completed the Zwift Academy in their own homes, the very best have now been selected for the grand final and brought to Spain, where just 10 riders remain in the fight to become a professional cyclist. There's no opportunity quite like this. After five gruelling days of intense competition, we will know who will be joining two of the world's best cycling teams, Alpa Cinder Koenig and Canyon Sram. I think the rider needs to be good enough to compete at every race. This is the Zwift Academy Finals. It's going to be super challenging, best possible win. Coming up, the remaining finalists face one last test. Before the judges make their decisions, there are so many other aspects to bike racing as well. We expect more from a, a road to climb it. And we crown this year's Zwift Academy winners. The winners of the Zwift Academy 2022 are. This is the final. Finalists, 160,000 people started the Zwift Academy and there are just six of you left. But there are only two professional contracts available and today is your last chance to win one of them. You've done amazingly well to get this far and you should be so proud of your achievements. But today, the winner takes it all. Although I did say that he'll buy you a hot chocolate. That's right, what a consolation prize. Now, what is in store for you on day five? Well. You've got a three-hour bike ride with a bit of a hill at the end. We might tell you a bit more when we're out on the road, but go get kitted up. We'll see you downstairs. Ta-da!
doesn't sound too bad, actually. It sounds fine, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a bit of a hill. So the final climb, or the final challenge, we're also fatigued now. I'd probably want to be ahead of Jasper. We're probably the two more explosive riders. The, it will be uh, the climb of a lifetime. I need to be at the top uh, uh, first. I think I, I'm going just full, full, full gas. Climbing is my strength. I just want to give my personal best. I don't know what to expect, so I have to attack and get rid of them. That little climb, more accurately, a monster of a climb. Yes, the Col de Rates Extreme, okay? It is huge. It's a climb that Tadej Pogacar himself has even used to test his legs on. So we're really going to get a good gauge of how our riders stack up, not just against each other, but also against the best of the best. And don't forget as well that our finalists are exhausted now. This has been a big, big week of competition. And so I think we can almost guarantee ourselves quite a lot of drama and a few upsets out there. Yes, definitely. The ability to tolerate a really tough week was something that really swayed the judges last year, wasn't it? It was indeed. Before we get underway with the final challenge, I've come to catch up with Magnus and Christoph over a coffee. Last day, final opportunity for the contestants to impress you both and land that contract. Magnus, first of all, we've got to talk about yesterday. How are Alex and Chiara, do you think, ahead of the final challenge? Um, Kiara kind of looks okay. Um, yes, she took a, a hit on the knee um, and her hand is a bit swollen, but apart from that, she seems to have come off relatively lightly from that, that, that crash. Um, Alex, on the other hand, is struggling uh, quite a lot with her hand. There was a big cut um, in that one that needed to be looked at um, at the hospital. So, um, yeah, it's not, it's not ideal for her. No. So, She's going to have a tough day today, but I guess she would anyway, right? Because it's not necessarily going to suit her attributes. No, it's not. Um, you know, she climbs well, but she's not a pure climber. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a, a, a very difficult day, I think, for her to, uh, uh, to be challenging. Yeah. And what about you, Christoph? Because <clears throat> you and other Christoph have selected a lot of different riders as your riders of the day over the course of the week. But... Again, they've got different attributes, haven't they? So what, what have they got to do to impress you today? Uh, actually, since the points race, we miss a bit uh, real fighting, fighting spirit. We want to see them really fighting until the end, yeah. to have their own personal bests, because that is also what cycling is about, that they can't all be the winner in the end, but you need, you need guys, you need a team. And if everyone in the team just does his personal best, that's the way you get the forest as a team. Probably Luca will smash it because it's a steeper climb. He is the real climber of it. Uh, but we are really looking how long can they hold the wheel. And if they do it 500 meters longer than expected, then we are happy. Magnus, I know you've been really looking forward to seeing how they perform on the final day. Are you expecting anyone to crack today? Now, based on what I've seen from, from the riders we have here, um, they all seem to really, really want this and they keep on fighting to, to the end. Um, so I'm not really expecting anyone to lay down and sort of accept defeat even on the climb here. And like Christoph was just saying, we're really looking for that person to, to go deep, to, to push themselves. Um, you know, you know, the limit isn't really out there. It's what you set it to be. Whether they're first or last up to, up to the top of the mountain, it's just, you know, are they in the pile on the floor as they finish? If the answer is yes, then I'd be happy with that. Okay. I kind of don't really want to see that happen, but <laughs> let's go find out. Yeah. As I said, the final challenge is a three hour ride with a little hill at the end, which is not totally inaccurate, However, when they get to the base of this climb, they're going to have to race up it, head to head. For the first 15 minutes, they'll be paced by the pros before turning onto a steep, narrow, and at times gravel section of road where they'll duke it out for the win. First one to the top, takes the honours. Yeah, on top of one of the most popular climbs here, the Col de Rats, you have um, an extra part, which we call the Super Rats. It's a small road that most of cyclists 
that I know uh, don't take regularly, but yeah, for me, it's I love to ride it because it's so hard. You have to push uh, really hard to get up there. So it's free training, if I can say it like this. And uh, the view on top is amazing, but yeah, it's, um, it's a rather hard climb. There are gradients of over 20% in this final climb. So the riders are gonna have to be really powerful and fresh as possible too. Whew. It's just super important that you don't blow your engine because yeah, if you go a bit too fast in the beginning, you'll pay the price and you lose a lot of time. Yeah. Personally, I've never been very confident to just like reflect back on this. That, that would give me so much confidence moving forward and just believing that I can achieve what I want to achieve. I know that I'm 37 years old and I'm not so young to, to, be, to start to be a pro. If I got a pro contract, uh, uh, I will change my whole life. I realized that I'm really enjoying cycling and racing and I, that's what I really want to do in future. Really proud to be here and to show what I'm capable of. Right, final challenge. We're gonna go up the Col de Rat. The pros are gonna set the pace on the early parts of, of the climb. When we get to the cafe, we're about um, well, right at the top, the original top, you guys are gonna continue. From there on, it's all the way to the very, very top of the station. And that's free race for you guys to go all the way to the top. Here we go then, the final challenge of the Zwift Academy 2022. We know how tough this is, and it's made even harder by four pro cyclists setting a fearsome tempo. Magnus and Beth have asked their pros to ride at 4.5 watts per kilo, but this looks faster than that. I think Elise Shabby is putting in one final test of her own here, and why not? Pro racing is unpredictable. Impressive riding from Alex and Chiara with those injuries from yesterday. Knowing what we know from the last four days, you would think though that it's Chiara who's the most comfortable right now. We are nearing the moment where the race is really on. We are high up on the climb and they will know that it's about to get really tough. Here we go then, we are turning off the main road and it's time for the finalists to let rip. And it's Kiara who goes. This is a huge attack. Bear in mind, she has never seen this climb before and she's flying straight into the gravel section, but not backing off for a moment. Neela is chasing hard though. That is not much of a gap at this stage. She's putting up a great fight, digging deep, but this climb is so tough that there's a risk of simply going too hard early on and then blowing up later. I think this is a climb that really suits Kiara's style of riding as well because she loves being out of the saddle for, for long periods of time. Kiara needs to keep applying the pressure. She must dominate this challenge to really impress the judges. It looks dramatic, it looks amazing. You know, mean, in, a, in a race environment, I mean, is it's it fast it. enough? <laughs> question, uh, that's a big question. That is a reasonable gap now though. She is flying up this climb, averaging 4.7 watts per kilo. Like Chiara is definitely a, a very, very, you know, impressive climber. There's no question about that. But I think Neil is still, still fighting in the game. Here comes Alex now. She is fighting hard, down but not out. She's not a climber, so she just needs to keep Chiara within touching distance to do enough to impress the judges. This looks disastrous for Neela though. She's come to a stop. Jason Chiara has proved to be too big a risk and the gradient of 20% here is just too much to allow her to recover, exactly as Van der Poel had warned. 
And look, Alex now goes past Neela. She's kept fighting and is still in the mix. So it's good to say she's a fighter, though, is she? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a testament, isn't it? I mean, she's been riding one-handed half of the time, so... It's a two-horse race now, and the climber Kiara needs to show that she's world-class in this terrain. She must fly up the last few switchbacks. Kiara crosses the line in 14.05, the fastest time ever up this climb. But the countdown to Alex now starts. Did you, did you expect to stay away for it all? Uh, yes, maybe yes, because I know that the climbs are my favourite path, you know. So I'm happy. Good, you should be. Here comes Alex, two minutes and 27 seconds later. Has she done enough to impress the judges? Leela crosses the line in third. She will be glad she's finished, but her disappointment is clear to see. This is not the final she'll have been hoping for. It's just the weather, maybe. Oh. It's hot. It's really warm. You absolutely smashed it. You'd be so <laughs> proud of yourself. Yeah, I just kept thinking, like, this what? is it. This is it of the week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is what we're going to finish with. So. Yeah. If I can just try my best, that's all I can do at the moment in my state. Yeah, I think it's fair to say you definitely did. You should be really proud of yourself. Beth and Magnus, the climb did not disappoint. That looked savage, but it's kind of said, Kiara looked like she kind of bossed it. Beth, what do you think? Yeah, you could see it was clearly her area. I think she was quite happy when she looked up and saw the steepness of it. I'm sure she thought, okay, this is my time to try and shine. So, yeah, it was a very strong ride. Neela looked pretty crestfallen when she came back down. It feels like, I don't know, she maybe wanted more from herself, do you think, today? Yeah, I think possibly so, yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's always difficult when you're getting into the final days of, of this kind of uh, program where, you know, we're testing them every day, uh, both, both physically, mentally, uh, in every possible way we can with all the cameras around and, and so on and so on. That's, that's hard for them. And sometimes, you know, the stress takes, takes it out on you. Lastly, Alex. For me, it was definitely a, a really impressive ride. I mean, we could see already early on on the climb that she was, you know, riding one hander, trying to sort of, yeah, she couldn't stand up properly, um, but she kept on fighting and fighting. And, you know, that's, uh, I like to see stuff like that. It's now time for the men. Lucas, Jesper and Luca have just 9.8 kilometers of riding left in the Zwift Academy finals. All of it is uphill. I think looking back on this, it will be, yeah, I'll look back on it as a great experience, knowing I've given it my best. It can be the start of, of, an, of a new chapter in my life. I had a taste of the professional world and a taste of my dream. Team Alpecin de Koenig line it out with Maurice Ballastad starting it off. World Mountain Bike Marathon champion Sam Gaze is next, keeping the tempo high. Then World Gravel champion Jani Vermeesh. The finalists are still looking composed, but again, just like with the women's race, the pace here looks significantly hotter than the five watts per kilo the pros were instructed to ride at. In the wheels, Jason Osborne is holding 420 watts. The former Olympic rower was the first ever UCI eSports world champion, taking the win on Zwift in 2020, if you remember. 
it looks like that tempo has done some damage and the guys are starting the final section of climb already spread across the mountain. With Luca charging to the fore. He is in his element, but his competition here are sprinters, so he still needs to produce a performance that will convince the judges that he has got what it takes to climb with the best in the pro peloton. And Jesper is not giving up. He is holding Luca at a respectable distance, but is he going to suffer the same fate as Nila before him? These upper slopes are unforgiving. Luca looks to be pedaling with ease. This is something of a masterclass, spinning at 6.3 watts per kilo. Jesper is still just in sight though, a fantastic performance from yesterday's rider of the day. Unlike Luca, this is not his speciality, so he can impress the judges by hanging in there, saving his sprint for another day. And what's of Lucas? He appears to have approached this in a very different way, pacing his effort carefully. In fact, he looks now to be closing in on Jesper. Luca approaches the final corner. His win on this climb is not in doubt. He has made this fierce ascent look easy. But his time up it? 11 minutes 37. That's one minute down on Tade Pogacar's best. The question is though, has Luca given it everything? You don't actually seem that out of breath. Oh, they manage it, pace it, okay. You paced it well? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Yeah, like probably <laughs> the guys were pushing a bit too high. So we were uh, in two. I did my best, I think I did it well. So let's see the judges what uh, decide. Further down the climb, and Lucas has indeed caught Jesper, which creates an interesting dynamic. Our two sprinters are now neck and neck. It's going to be a tough decision for our judges. Lucas crosses the line in second. A great ride, and one to be happy about. I would have liked to hold on to the lead out, mm -hmm. but I was just I was struggling too much. Yeah, that's well, an absolute yeah. savage climb. Yeah. Do you want to do it again? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know for sure it's my last chance, you know, it's, it's my only chance, my, my last chance after so many years of crashing, disappointment and all. <sighs> Luca just demolished that, didn't he? I guess, were you expecting it? Yes, we were expecting it, but uh, we were not expecting that the others would be dropped uh, so fast or so soon. But in the end, we checked also the our riders did also not uh, exactly what was asked. So it went a bit too fast from the beginning. So <laughs> has Luca impressed enough as a climber today to warrant consideration? I mean, has he gone fast enough, do you think? Uh, we still need to wait a bit until we really see the the time that he did here and also the power that he managed. Um, we also need the exact power bit of our lead out guys. Um, so we need to wait till we have the complete picture. Okay, so a little bit more data needed before yes. you guys can make your decision, but we'll find out later on. Yep. Okay, thanks guys. See you back Thank at the hotel. Okay, folks, this is the big one, isn't it? So no riders of the day today. 
you are deciding who is going to be riding for your respective teams next season, which is pretty exciting, but it does feel like this is even more important than usual. Kiara, I guess, was odds on favourite to win today. But my question to you is, did she ride fast enough up that climb in order to be a climber in the World Tour? I mean, it was, she was rode fast up there, there's no question about that. But is it fast enough to be going straight into the World Tour peloton and be at the very, very front end of, of the competition? Um, yeah, that's that's a question for me. I, I'm not sure. Okay, how much room to grow do you think she has, Beth? Kiara definitely has room to progress and improve. She hasn't been cycling that long, and you can see that clearly she's talented a climber, especially. So, and skills-wise, she was really good uh, in our group. So, I, f I feel like she does have some room for progression. And what about Neela then, Beth? Because she. Well, I don't know how to describe it. She stopped, didn't she? With two hairpins to go. Do you know why? I think she was. She really just went so deep. I mean, the pace was hard, and then on the 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 final climb, when Kiara really just you know attacked it, I think Neela really tried to go with, and I think she suffered for that at one point. Um, you know, she was really disappointed after that she couldn't sort of keep going and keep sort of suffering and fighting through. But you know, sometimes that just happens. You don't often see that in the World Tour, but then I guess that was. That was an extreme climb, wasn't it? It's not called Col de Rats Extreme for nothing. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe it would be a different scenario if you really were in a race, you know, in that situation. I mean, she was really was so close to the end, which I think she didn't realise. So usually you would know that there was only, you know, one more hairpin to go. Okay, and Magnus, what about Alex then? Because she has not come across as a climber this week, but she's clearly got a great sprint, great one to six minute power yeah did she do enough up that climb with her handicap today we've got to say <laughs> yeah. you know could she could she get through world tour races to be able to do a job when she's needed to do it so i think if you start looking at the overall picture of alex she's the one with the most racing experience um she's not that far off if we start looking at watts per kilo um so there is still a lot of room for improvement there i think as well in terms of that that bigger engine to to get herself over that um but yeah it, she's definitely some way behind chiara in terms of that that pure natural ability to go uphill but there are so many other aspects to bike racing as well so that's where we i guess we've, we've got to work out what we need. Yeah, and you told us this morning that you wanted to see your riders fighting. I think we saw that from all three of them today, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. No one disappointed when it came to effort. No, definitely not. I mean, um, nearly went that deep that she basically just saw stars and almost felt like she was about to faint. Um, Alex, I think she rode the first half of that climb one-handed because her hand was hurting that badly. So it was only on the final part where she decided that, you know, I really got to commit to this to get up it. And when she got to the top, she was completely spent as well. So she went full gas regardless of the pain that she had in the, from her injuries. And obviously Chiara managed to sustain the effort, even though she also was, has been quite sore from, uh, you know, took quite a big hit on her knee. Um, so yeah, they've all been fighting uh, to the death for this. And um, it's really nice to see and impressive that they, they wanted this badly. Yeah, so a few more contestants have left it all out there. No questions asked. Guys, that was something that you were talking about this morning as well. Wanting to see fighting spirit from your riders. How do you think they fared today? Should we start with Jasper? Yeah, Jasper was one of the guys who uh, fought pretty long. Uh, he tried to follow Luca on Colderat as long as he could. Um, so on that point, he did uh, he did quite okay, I guess. Um, I just think the guys, um, when you have to watch or feel your own subjective feeling on the lead out tempo that the pro riders were doing, and you have some kind of expectation in your head, okay, uh, five watts a kilo should feel this way. And if it then feels harder, it's maybe just yeah, hard to accept. And that's where they, where, where uh, Jasper and also maybe Lucas just lost it a bit. So let's talk about Luca then, because he did go up there quickly. Certainly he put a lot of time into Jasper and Lucas. But again, I suppose a little bit like we were talking about with Chiara, did he go up there fast enough to be a climber at Alp Cinder Koenig? Then he has to improve from what we saw on the climb that was not enough. 
Um, maybe there is room for improvement, but from what he did now, uh, that was not enough. It's like Christoph says, I think we still have a few questions. Um, pure on the numbers, before Luca came to the final, um, he showed us already some strong numbers, some numbers that are somewhere around uh, top climbers on the World Tour level. His day one with the inside test, he confirmed that, uh, all his historic numbers before coming uh, into the competition. But from then on, actually we, we never saw any top numbers anymore, which we think of, okay, yeah, listen, this uh, can be top 10, top 20 in, in, in uh, climbing in, in a World Tour bunch. Yeah, so or, or otherwise he did it tactically within this competition very well by just going through the days, safe energy, don't kill himself on day three by showing us uh, the world and then maybe crash on day four, whatever, uh, physically or mentally. But that are still a few questions because the 5.7, 5.8 watts a kilo in, in the, the last half of Colderots where they really raced each other, we expect more from a, a World Tour climber. You need to go and make him do it again tomorrow, don't you? Hold the rats extreme and really try hard this time. You certainly saw effort, I think, from Jasper today, which is what you wanted. Questions still over Luca as to his effort levels today. And it seems like you have an equally difficult decision on your hands. You've got riders with very different specialities. Yeah. And I suppose ultimately it's who Canyon SRAM needs, right? What type of rider? Okay, well, you need to go away and make those decisions and then we'll tell the riders very soon indeed. Finalists, this has been an incredible week of competition, so thank you. To get here was an achievement in itself, and so regardless of the results tonight, we hope that you all leave with some really special memories and having made the most of every experience, whether that's riding with the pros or getting feedback from the pro team judges. Of course though, that's not why you're here. You want that professional cycling contract. Yeah, now you have all performed brilliantly. You've all impressed the judges in different ways, but as you well know, there are only two contracts available. One for Canyon SRAM and one for Alpes Intercanic. Two life-changing opportunities for two outstanding cyclists. Yeah, now you have not made this easy. The judges have been deliberating long and hard, but they have come to their decisions. The winners of the Zwift Academy 2022 Ah. Luca and Alex, congratulations! Yes. Well done, both. Come on, guys, break it out. Well done, Alex. Meet your new team. Luca, meet your new team. And I'm, I'm happy. We could have party tonight. I'm really happy for Luca. He deserves it. Being the winner of Swift Academy is really, really special and I can just be really proud of myself for how far I've come. Winning Swift Academy obviously is a big thing, it's a life-changing opportunity and I will try to give my best to make it count. What a week it has been. Zwift Academy 2022 has come to an end. But was that the results you were expecting? Let us know down in that comment section below. That's right. Before we go, we want to say a few big thank yous. Firstly to Zwift for making this all happen. 160,000 of you entered the Academy. I think this is the only platform where you could have a meaningful competition like this, and it's fantastic that they run it. Also, I want to say a big thank you to the crew here. There's a lot of them that have brought you these amazing images and the high drama as well, so thank you to all of them. Also, a big thank you to all the pro teams, the staff, the riders, and of course, the Zwift Academy finalists for giving it their all this week. Right, to the bar? Yeah, go on. I think we deserve it. Yeah. Um, is there any chance you could, you could bring Matthew Van Der and Elise Shabby with you? Such a loser, Si. Such no. a loser. No, I know, but seriously. No, know. Can you stop just it. drop them a WhatsApp? No. 